the EA Sports Cup is back and we're ready after a few weeks out for the winter break. And tonight is very much the business end of the tournament as we're at the elimination stage right now. We have eight teams left and one mistake could see them exit the tournament and not be able to get their hands on this beautiful trophy on Wednesday night. Well, tonight then we have four uh, elimination matches and let me tell you, every single team have proved they deserve to be here. Some say 2v2 FIFA is just for fun. Well, not here. Mbappe, no! Oh! Croy, love it, is it there? Hey, oh! This is about handling pressure. They have to be 4 0 down on the triple! <laughs> Proving people wrong. Complexity might get a gift! I saw some people say that we kind of fell off, so it feels good to just kind of shut everyone up. And doing what's necessary to win. I'm not scared of anyone, but I do not think we're the underdogs here. But oh. this is what the EA Sports Cup has been all about. It is Pele. Dolomite dancing in the balls, quite literally, dancing his way to goal. In the first eight weeks, chemistry was the secret ingredient. Levy Davi looking for the one more pass into his teammate who does so well. And raw talent sent a clear message. Mbappe and Tex doing what he does on the biggest of stages. We're through. <laughs> it's about doing anything and everything to win. Live from London. The EA Sports Cup starts now. Well, we're back, which means the Rachel Stringer Show is back. No longer the Richard Buckley Show. Sorry, Rich, if you've been demoted after I've come back after my little sit away in Doha. I'm being nice, really. I love that we're all back together as a proper group, though, for the knockouts. Mike LaBelle is here. I feel like I was here. positioned here for that. I didn't know, but now I know. <laughs> He's just uh, in the middle, just to break up any rivalry me and Rich have. No, jokes aside, it's great to be back at the business end, like I just mentioned. But before we get into the quarterfinals tonight, let's just quickly recap on the eight weeks we had before Christmas. Guys, big question. Did it play out like we expected it to? No, it couldn't, it can't be. When, when I'm looking at this, we don't have the world champs. When you're looking at Heretics with Matias Bonanno, your favorite. MS Desari not making it to a semi, a final. He's not even in the top eight. We usually aren't talking about that when we're dealing with FIFA Esports. When we get into the knockout stages of FIFA, there's one man, there's one name, Nicholas 99 FC, that we always associate with this stage. He's not here for me. That's a massive, massive shock that Gil didn't make it. There are so many shocks. Obviously, we started with 20 teams, didn't we, at the beginning of this tournament? And now we're down to our final eight. And they are ready to go into battle tonight. The likes of Focus there, Mike LaBelle. Who do you think would have really needed that winter break we're talking about? I'm going to build off that. I'd actually say that Focus needed the break because they started this tournament fantastic. Last time we saw them in action, they were less than stellar, if I want to put it nicely. And having a few weeks off, you can come back, you can regroup and they can kind of rework some of their tactics. And Rich, your question, who do you think would have built on the winter break? Or from uh, what we saw in the eight weeks, of course. I think there's one team that's built on it probably more than others, and that's Footways, due to the success that Ethan has in FGS Qualifier 1. He was the number one player in the entirety of Europe. His teammate alongside Nick Sneb with him. I know they've been grinding, they've been practicing well at the Footways HQ, and I think they're gonna really come out strong here today. Yeah, he's gonna be super confident. But first up, quarterfinal one is Complexity Gaming, the only team, of course, from North America against PSG Esports. And we've got RB Leipzig Gaming against Fnatic. I spoke to Diogo from Fnatic earlier, yeah, he's, he's pretty worried about that one. Then we have Atleti Riders. Obviously, that's Movistar Riders. New team now, Atleti de Madrid. Movistar Riders. Tonight, though, Atleti Riders. Uh, they're taking on Team Footwiz, who Rich just spoke about having so much confidence after Ethan, of course, topping the European table. And then Focus against Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pyjamas. Again, the boys from NIP, they said they're, they're playing the best FIFA. They ended, didn't they? The eight weeks saying they're playing their best FIFA. And they're still, I guess, saying they're, they're pretty in great form tonight. So that's the bracket. We've got four quarterfinals, of course, but let's talk about exactly what's up for grabs tonight, Richard Buckley. The money. Tell me about the Muller. Yeah, there's some serious prize money that is on the line here for the EA Sports Cup. The winner is going to take on 50k. That's when we decided on Wednesday. The runner-up, 35. And you can see the prize pool breakdown. Well, four people will be guaranteed $25,000 by the end of play today. But also, the 
prize that money can't buy, a Club World Cup spot. That is the runner-up and the champion guarantee a place at the Club World Cup finals later in the year. In the most prestigious tournament, isn't it, on the calendar, obviously, the finale of the season. So that maybe is even more important than the prize there. But anyway, Mike, the rules have changed, haven't they, from the last eight weeks before Christmas. What is now up for how they're playing, the format, the rules? Let me give you the path. So we're dealing with single <laughs> elimination, but it's over two legs. Remember, we didn't have the two legs previously. If tied, extra time, penalty kicks, we have to have an elimination. And then the top two teams advance to the FIFA E Club World Cup, which is what Rich was touching on, which means not only do you get that extra cheddar, but you also guarantee yourself another tournament, more money, bigger prestige, you have a lot of negotiation room, your partnership is working. And possibly no more stress for the season because the job which everyone wants to get done, the qualification for the World Cup, has been sorted out early doors, so they can just focus on their season. Well, let's focus on the first quarterfinal. Complexity taking on PSG. Mike LaBelle obviously will have his eyes on complexity. I'm looking for them right now. I don't, I don't see them, but I, I, I think they've performed really well. I've never been in doubt, as Max talked about at the intro, a little bit had some haters maybe, but they're back uh, in full effect. The only North American team now in the top eight. I mean, Mike was never in doubt. I think, though, it's safe to say a lot of us were in doubt, but obviously they're through to tonight. Let's see how they got here. They have been 2v2 world champions before, not once, but twice. When 2v2 came up, they were the first team that showed how it was like to play 2v2. Complexity looking for an equaliser. Pele! Maxi! With another goal! How important was that equaliser? You saw like how close the groups are. So one point is like could easily be the difference between getting grouped and getting out. They're making this hard for themselves, Complexity. Cristiano Ronaldo! Oh, the bar. God. Jobson and Max, they're looking good. Very, very good and one of the toughest, toughest groups. Complexity's on beaten streak will come to an end in round one here at the EA Sports Cup. And this table will shake up ever so nicely in Group A. Now what have they got from the corner? What's coming from the training ground? And there you have it! Complexity right back into the game. How does it feel for you guys, not only to get out of the group, to advance, but also to top the group? I, I saw some people say that we kind of fell off, so it feels good to just kind of shut everyone up. I mean, we're, we're happy with getting first in the group, but we want to win the whole thing. And the reason I was saying we possibly were doubting them is because of what happened last year. Okay, you can't take away a two times world champion as a pair as well, but they weren't in the best form last year. They've made such a comeback. What's it down to? I think they, they reconnected. They worked out some of that, that teamwork. And also, you might have heard a little bit of that disgruntled confidence. That'll do something for you. You got a chip on the shoulder, you feel the disrespect, and you got to like kind of come back and remind people who you are. And that's exactly what they've done thus far, and they're going to continue to do. Yeah, surprise package, I'm going to say, of this tournament. And possibly, Rich, so a PSG, this new partnership, they've possibly surprised everyone in their group, especially knocking out Team Ajax and, and your favourites, Team Heretics. Yeah, they certainly are. They're one of the biggest clubs in world football, RPSG, and I think picking up this roster, you're starting to see them flourish in the FIFA eSports scene as they have yesteryear. They knocked out two of the big guns, and let's see exactly how they did it. For the side of PSG, back in the mix this year in FIFA eSports. Chicky chip, surely this has to go in. There's a the goal back for PSG. Just offloading to Pele. Big chance for PSG. Slots it in the bottom left corner. So PSG, a mixed bag of results. I think you take it coming into the day. Are you going to go through? Yeah, for sure. We will try our best and uh, we will see how it is. But yes, we are going to go through. And we'll see whether there's a chance here. And that's going to be the perfect start here for PSG. Great feet. PSG are through, and as that happens, PSG solidify themselves in the knockout stages. Until now, I don't know how to express <laughs> my feelings. Like, I'm confused, but I'm very happy. What a group. PSG Esports advanced to the knockout bracket. I mean, Group D, another super difficult group to come through. I love that I asked Richard Buckley this question, the fact they knocked out his babies, Team Heretics, Matthias Banana. I mean, that was a massive surprise. Their Team of the Season Cup reigning champions in 2v2. And they didn't only just do it by a point, by a draw. It was three points difference from second to third. I really think PSG showed one thing, and that's the ice. They showed the composure. They finished round one on five points. They took into round two, eight points out of 12, unbeaten, two wins, two draws. They did what they needed to do. And I think it shows a real, real experience and a level of composure that maybe not other, other teams have shown yet.
Well, we needed someone with the ice because Nicholas isn't here, is he, in yeah. Team Guild? So there we have it. PSG wants to watch. And uh, there are two teams, of course, in our first quarterfinal. Six more to bring you as well later on. And someone else who is back as well, joining the team, back from Doha, is Kyle Walker. And he's um, obviously brought a jacket out in the Middle East as well, matching Mike and I. Kyle, please introduce the teams to us. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, it is great to be back and it is great to be introducing our first two teams that will be hoping to make it to the semi-final stage of the competition. First up, they came second in Group D with some pretty impressive victories as well. It is PSG Esports. Now, these guys will be looking to come up and not just enjoy themselves, but also cause a bit of an upset let's quickly chat to them guys it's great to have you here looking very confident and liking the uh, sunglasses as well that you've got you said that you're here to enjoy it but surely surely you're hoping you can make it through to that semi-final and go on maybe to even lift that trophy uh, for most of people fifa is just a game but for us it's a full-time job so uh, let's play and uh, make of this day a normal day at work a normal day at work. I'm looking forward to it. Good luck. Right, let's get our second team up. Their opponents all the way from North America. It's complexity. Now, these guys will be hoping that they can surely, surely do what they didn't manage to last season, but they're here for a successful one. Let's chat to both Maxi and Joxan. Maxi, straight to you first. Disgruntled confidence and maybe a bit of a chip on your shoulder. That's what uh, how it was described just before. You mean business. You're here to show everyone that North Americans, that yourself, you are here to do the business tonight. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we've had some people write us off in the past, so we're looking at this tournament as a way to remind everybody that we're the best duo. Joxan, people have written you off before, but you're here hoping to go through to Wednesday to that semi-final and maybe even lift that trophy as well. What have you got to do tonight to ensure you go through? Uh, we got to play well, don't lose the ball, don't make stupid mistakes, so hopefully we do that. Now, there's some very vocal teams that are also here that maybe aren't facing you just now, but maybe backstage watching. Have you got any messages for them? Some that may say they're the best in the world and you guys aren't as good as them? We got to let our play do the talking, you know, so maybe after this game. I'm liking the, the disgruntled confidence. We're definitely going with that one, guys. It's a pleasure. Go and get yourselves ready. Right, well, we've heard from both of those competitors just here, both teams, and the timer is up. We're getting closer and closer to these elimination stage of the tournament. So let's get to the FIFA 23 action. Richard Buckley's taking his mic off. He's put his headphones on, and he's joined by Brandon Smith. Over to you guys. Thank you very much, Carl. And yes, you could say Happy New Year from the commentary booth. We're back for another year of FIFA, of course. The same tournament, but just split across a small winter break. Richard, it is a bit of a different feeling here tonight because it is knockout play now. We had group stages, eight weeks of group stages back in November and December last year. Now we're here for the knockout stage where the cash really starts to come out and play. The, the cash comes out to play and I think the implications come out to play as well. Those Club World Cup spots cannot be understated at how important they are Brandon uh, I really think that the the pressure is going to play a part in this tournament and I think it's going to be not necessarily the best mechanical team not necessarily the best team who can play FIFA 23 it's going to be the best team who can deal with the situation and deal with the pressure yeah well it's great you, you say that isn't it because you get $25,000 uh, of course split if you win the competition $50,000 does go to the top team on Wednesday night but you're right that that FIFA E Club World Cup spot, you cannot put a price on that one. As we said, only two teams can get those spots. This is our first quarter final of today. As we said, complexity will take on PSG. And I, I think you're right. You spoke about PSG a lot in the preview. They are a surprise package, a huge football club with so much pressure behind those two players. But for me, they were a surprise package because maybe there was other teams in that group that FIFA fans around the world would have said, look, they're going through. But the two French players have been superb. Only lost one game in the group stages. They deserve to be in the top eight. The problem is they're up against the 2v2 team that have been playing their FIFA for many years now, previous 2v2 world champions. I think coming into this game, if you're talking about the, the preparation and maybe even the, the words that are being spread around PSG in particular, a lot of people are fearful of how good they've looked in, in warm-ups, in scrims, in these games leading up to the tournament. They have been, I mean, to, to take a word from the from the community, they've been frying. They, they've been 
sending people back to school with a, a number of their performances. Can that be replicated here on the biggest stage of them all, the biggest stage that they've played in in their FIFA esports career so far? Yeah, well, if this is your first time tuning in to the EA Sports Cup, you come at the perfect time. Quarter finals live in London. Four games coming your way back to back today. PSG looking to get the first real chance of the game. It's Ronaldini off the get go. Ooh. It's a great bit of trickery. And Van der Sar has to get down to ground. As we said, FIFA Ultimate Team is the mode in play. And if you are wondering why these teams are so stacked, these pro players have got access to pretty much every single player in the game just for tonight. And that is why you are seeing icons galore everywhere. We just saw a first chance of the game on one side from PSG. One man that's popped up on two occasions already, Richard, is Ronaldinho. Yeah, he had that chance for PSG. The only reason that they got that chance was because both players pressed really, really well. It was, uh, I think, in the middle of the pitch, Rude Hullet who had it, and they just instantly zapped onto him. They won the ball back high in the complexity game in half, and in the end, probably should be 1-0 up. Went for the ball roll uh, sort of variation, heel to heel around the keeper it was a good save from van der Sar, but i love the early pressure and the early press coming out from psg esports the one thing we have to also talk about here as well is in group play it was one game one and done yes you played everybody twice but it was a single leg you got three points after you know one simple game of fifa with this being knockouts it's a two-legged aggregate scoreline game how's that going to change things here richard because Yes, FIFA Esports is normally played over two legs, but in this competition, it's the first night where it has been. Well, it gives teams more time. That's the biggest sort of element of it, whether that's positive or negative time. Positive in the factor that if you're down two, three goals in the first leg, it's not game over. You've got time to bring it back. If you are leading, you've got a long time to see out a game. It's complexity now. Remember, past 2v2 world champions, it's the same duo with Maxi and Joxamp. They've been playing their FIFA together since 2019. It's quite a few years they've had representing the American esports organization. They are the only team outside of Europe that have got this far. And by no means you cannot look past that incredible achievement. Here comes a corner. Yeah, Torre was man marking Virgil van Dijk there. And our first set piece of tonight's action. It was uh, dealt with with ease. A one at home for you if you are looking to uh, potentially get a set piece from a corner and turn it into a goal. You saw that he, took, he put the right analogue stick all the way to the right-hand side of the ball, get that in-swing curve on it and uh, attempted to whip it into a dangerous area with a lot of pace and a lot of power. And of course, we can see you guys at home getting involved in the conversation. Let us know in the chat, whether that be Twitch or YouTube. Who do you think is going all the way in the EA Sports Cup. Of course, that question will be answered on Wednesday night. Tonight, we'll find out what four teams will be booking themselves into the semi-finals. Alongside bagging some decent cash along the way. Here's R9 dancing in the box, quite literally. Great save. Needed Van der Sar again, who has made one or two stops early into the game. Just needs that extra touch to, uh, to pounce onto the ball there and get two hands on. I was just looking through the, the, the list of players, Rich, that have made it into this top eight today. Joxan, believe it or not, is the oldest player left in the tournament still. He's only 24, but in that time, look at what he's achieved in this FIFA scene. He has got some incredible accolades. And I do think what Maxi and Joxan have as a team, yes, you can look back at Denmark last year, Copenhagen, which was a, a month to forget about. Look how that's changed this year into FIFA 23 and what team they still are and a force to be uh, reckoned with. I think what they've done, Michael alluded to it at the top of the show, if they had some grievances, they've, they've ironed them out. They've stressed, they've sort of de-stressed the situation that was there when they weren't performing well. There might have been in the past blame placed on each other. Now, it's a very level playing field. They're a very good team. I'll probably say they're one of the best teams in terms of uh, two players who have chemistry, who can sort of uh, bring each other up and make each other better that we've got left in this top eight. And that's simply as well because of how long we've seen them together for. They've established this chemistry and this teamwork. Speaking of complexity now, Mbappe just charging forward. Van der Sar also comes charging out a goal. You are right, look at the, the run they had. They were able to top the group in Group A. First place, they got 15 points behind them. Yes, they scored 14, conceded 10. But still, they topped the group, gave themselves, you could call that slight advantage, but no one's an advantage here. Ball across the box. 
Cleared away by Patrick Vieira, who will come in as a centre-back again. It's a huge, huge clearance. Um, can't understate how important that was, because it looked as though Amar, like blue cursor in the bottom right, was in on goal with Ronaldo Nazario. The cross was whipped in, and Vieira just about cleared it from underneath his own crossbar. PSG looking very, very dangerous, but then Maxi had a good chance. A couple of step-overs with Mbappe to create the space. Couldn't quite get the shot away. Well, it's worth mentioning, obviously, 2v2 feet for me. It's two players control him. The 11 players on the pitch. Keep an eye on those little curses above the in-game items there. One side you can see a blue and a sort of turquoise green. On the flip side, it's yellow and red. Here's Pele now on the edge of the box. Well, Time it green again, Vieira just about managing up the perfect block there. Defensively sound so far, have complexity been. Just trying to really look, Richard, what's changed since the winter break in terms of teams? Not much really. We know the likes of Mbappe's had a slight upgrade on his foot item. Yaya Torre won't be moved. That World Cup upgrade still features if not Zidane, alongside Hull at half-time here in our first quarter-final. Nil-nil so far, and as expected, it is going to be a little bit of a feeling out stage. We're talking about the, the teams in particular. It's the uh, prime icons introduced, mainly, that, that have uh, been brought into the teams. You can see conversations there ongoing between both sets of players. Rather interesting that Amar chooses to uh, whack his headphones on with the music full blast and his teammate in Kante just uh, soaking up the atmosphere here in the arena here in London. It's an interesting duo this PSG side in Kante did sign for the club a few years back but for now we'll catch up more on that for now let's head down to Carl Walker who is alongside some other people that might be feeling a little bit nervous tonight. Thank you, Brandon. Yes, I am indeed. Daniel, you're obviously the coach for RB Leipzig. Your game, a huge game coming up next. We're just talking about this one. Nil-nil, 45 minutes in. Obviously, we've got two legs slightly different to the eight weeks that we had previously. How difficult is it adjusting from gameplay, ensuring that you don't give a mistake away? And you're the coach, so you're sitting back, you're watching the guys play, but making sure that there's a balance between not giving a mistake away, but also going forward and scoring. Yeah. I mean, uh, especially in quarterfinal, it's today like the first game where it matters. So um, it's it's hard to find the right way to do to take risk and yeah, just to be play safe. Well, they're not playing safe because they've started the second half. So let's get straight back to Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Carl. Great to hear there from. The man behind the success of RB Leipzig could be a chance early doors in this second half. Lucio is one of the other foot heroes that will feature in this side for PSG. But just on that point, very quickly, Richard, of RB Leipzig, they did top their group. They have the tally for the most goals scored and the most points accumulated in this tournament. I've got a question for you, Brandon. Obviously, we've got the, we've got the chat open. We can see it. Kyle just asked a question, so I'm going to do the same to you. Someone said, why is no one using Dallo? At right back. That was a genuine question that came through the chat. Thoughts? I mean, it's a it's a bit of a left shout, isn't it? Of it's left field. Plays at right back. Maybe we'll see him one day. Look, if you've not got the coins, he can fit straight into the team. One more pass. He's run out. Dino, great save. Van der Sop. It's a fantastic chance early on, and it's no surprise it has. Fallen through the hands of Ronaldinho. can we see from this corner? Whipped in deep. And Van der Sar, two hands on it. To continue on the answer from that question, I mean, there's just better right backs available for these guys to use. Cafu is that player of choice for both of these two teams. And to be honest, will probably be the option of choice across the next six teams you see involved tonight. PSG, uh, first half, they were, you would say, the slightly more proactive team. But I, I've... This opening 13 minutes from what we've seen called complexity, they're getting down, down the flanks. They're getting a lot of space in these dangerous wide areas. Is Maxi now in control. Ronaldinho on a play. Oh, no! There's your first shot, really, from Joxan in the box. And who else would it be? Mr. Reliable, as always, no matter where it is, no matter what time of day, Ronaldo Nazario 
to get things moving. Complexity lead by a goal to nil. Just gave Maxi out wide with Ronaldinho way too much time. And the difference between the casual player sitting at home and these players behind us in this booth, the top eight teams in the world, as soon as he got inside the box, he popped off the step overs, the calmness. Some players at home, they might try and look for a finesse shot in the far corner. They might try and do another skill move. You've just been successful, pop off another one. It was the teamwork, it was the composure just to lay it off into Joxan, who has Ronaldo Nazario, and it's always going to be a goal. Great play. Poor defensively from PSG, because I said the wide areas was where they could get in behind complexity. And they just left the space there. They didn't track the runner of Ronaldinho. He just ran straight off of the right back. And we can see that right back's been changed because Trent Alexander-Arnold is now on the pitch. Although well, there was a, a list of right backs that you guys home wanted to see involved. Trent Alexander-Arnold comes into the fault. Clearly, it's as harsh as you can see. You were terrible there. You didn't stop off. Ronaldinho. Get Swing yourself off. off. Yeah, Trent, you're on. Trent, you're on. Try and make something happen. But how many times have we teased that, Rich? Ronaldinho has caused issues on both sides of the pitch. Look where the play is again. This left-hand side of the pitch, PSG's right side, is where Complexity Gaming are getting all their play at this moment. And they've also compounded the misery because they've just brought a brand new left-back on. Alfonso Davies is now on the pitch at left-back. Well, 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 PSG. No keeper movement, this could be dangerous. Making the changes, watch this corner then, Pele's over it, it's Maxi taking the corner, Joxan Hullet. teasing Hullet's run in the box, there's also a run from R9 there, flicked it on, there was an idea, and there's another corner that's been won. Expect to see across tonight, three, four, five different ideas from these set pieces. Especially of how low scoring some of these games are gonna be, towards that's the back post, there you go! If plan A or B doesn't work, let's go for plan C! We said the goalkeeper movement wasn't there. It didn't tempt them into trying to shoot, maybe, or looking for something different. It was just a whipped with some serious venom into the back post area. And we're showing you all the tricks of the trade here tonight. Three or four different corner techniques that you could be pulling out of your locker. And who else? Van Dyke at the back post. Especially especially tonight, Richard, of all nights. A corner can be the difference, can't it? If you it's get in, pull out get the, through. The, the ace in the hole shall we say. This is where you pull out the thing that you've not shown on your live stream or you've not shown in qualifiers to other players, the thing that you've been working on behind closed doors. This is the time to pull out that free kick, to pull out that corner. Because it could be worth it. 25k. $25,000. That is what you'll get with a win in the quarter final here tonight. 2-0 they lead. Yes, there's a second leg to play, but this is the sort of scoreline where... It's it's a, it's a horrible scoreline in some ways. Especially against such a good defensive side, a renowned defensive oh, side. Ronaldinho just charging forward for PSG. Great save again. Van der Sar has been a hero. The one. Will he be a hero again this time? And Bappe, the Frenchman, will pick PSG up off their knees and say, come on, we've still got a second leg to play. And we talked about the ice inside the box. It wasn't there for Encante. He shot straight at the keeper, but he got another bite at the cherry. Killing Mbappe, a couple of step overs inside the box, reclaimed and recalmed himself. Massive goal. Great finish as well. I didn't think Van der Sar was going to be beat in this first leg. He looked like a man possessed. The composure there from Kante, because it was Hell Mary in that box, wasn't it? There were chances, there were saves, the ball was bouncing around, and you spoke about, Rich, what makes the difference between the casual and the pro player. Look no further, the composure there from Encante. Couple of step overs into the top corner. And just like that, PSG have now suddenly got this confidence of, look, why not? Why can't we go and find an equaliser? They've won a corner. See how dangerous they've been already today. We've only had 74 minutes of gameplay. And each corner, it's like a chess match. Where, how far do you move the keeper? Where do you move your defenders to inside the box? Look at the red and yellow icons of complexity. They've got Vieira and they had Rude Hullet. They're pulling their best headed players into that area. Here we go, it could be a flick on. There was an idea from Hullet. In the end will fall. Back to a navy blue complexity shirt. 
They're doing their bit just to try and keep hold of the ball and move it forward, maybe, to go and get another two-goal cushion, which will be massive. As we said, still a second leg to be played. Aggregate scoreline will go across that match. All that goal does, though, for PSG is massive. We know how little a one-goal deficit is. Maybe it could be two again. Cuts it back inside. Superb defended. It was brave from the Brazilian. And that time, Christopher and Kunku having to get back. Been some interesting players mixed into the play here. It's nice play inside the box. Thrown complex to the game in, just looking for that step over. It's been such a pivotal skill move. We've seen a lot of it in and around the box. You get that little speed boost from it as well and try and either open up space for a teammate or get a shot away yourself. Great first leg here of the EA Sports Cup. What's the ongoing run there on the left-hand side? Mbappe, oh no, and I think he was just offside. He won't make the, the run anyway. It's Cafu. Just gets back round to deal with the danger. Again, it's Ronaldinho again, just causing problems down this left-hand side. Can he find a cut back into the box now? Ronaldinho, great feed, back to Joxan. Another corner where complexity have already scored from. What plan have they got this time from the set piece? This time it's played short to Pelé. Keep the ball. Recycled all the way around. Still, they do keep possession. They don't want to be in danger of uh, forcing the turnover and PSG Esports having the final attack of this game. They're going to hold the ball, they're going to wait until that stoppage time, injury time comes up. They've got two additional minutes and now they'll try and go forward, but... Possession given away. the ball out of play gives PSG a chance to level up going into leg two. Last roll of the dice for PSG. If there's enough time, there is about 10 in-game seconds left to get the ball over the halfway line, which they've done. We'll get a chance. I think Ronaldinho will just be offside, and that will do us at the halfway point. Remember, this isn't done yet by any means. There is still a second leg to follow between these two giants. But at the halfway point, complexity lead PSG by two goals to one. It could have been a two-goal uh, advantage to take into the break, but that Mbappe goal was massive for PSG just to get them back believing, back thinking, look, we've made it this far. Why can't we go the full way? PSG potentially could feel hard done by to have not scored more. Uh, a couple of great saves from Van der Sar in the complexity goal. It was that early chance, the uh, sort of ball roll heel to heel. If you look for a different variation, potentially we could be looking at a tied game right now. 2-1. Complexity gaming take a very, very narrow scoreline margin into the second leg of action. No, absolutely, as we said, lots more to come here tonight. For now, we're going to go to a quick break. When we return, second leg between these two giants in our first quarter final of the EA Sports Cup. We'll be back in a few.
Well, welcome back to London for the EA Sports Cup. You're joining us for, no doubt, one of the best weeks of action. Remember, we've got gameplay today and Wednesday. By Wednesday night here in London, we'll crown our winner of this tournament, picking up $50,000. Myself, Brandon Smith, and Richard Buckley guiding you through our first quarter final today. Well, at the halfway point, Rich, there's still half a story to tell. This game is still very much open. Yeah, this game is, is way, way up in the balance right now. It's up in the sky. Nobody really has taken advantage of it. This was a huge chance early doors for PSG Esports to open the scoreline after three minutes. They had a second chance, which was tipped into a dangerous area from Edwin van der Sar. Complexity came down the other end with Kylian Mbappe, just nudged off of it, but it was in the second half where complexity really got going. And look where all these chances are being created from. Absolutely, it's that Brazilian man on the left-hand side. Then this happened, Richard, just before the 60th minute. It was Maxi into Joktan, and it was R9 Ronaldo getting that American side off the mark. After about five more minutes and a few corners, it was Virgil van Dijk's time to double the lead. And then this chance happened. It was a chance missed originally by Encante. And then this piece of composure from who else than Mbappe to bring them back into the tie. There was more chances and there is still a second leg to play here. Do not go anywhere and do not leave your screens. This was the match stats though, Richard, from the game. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the overall there from the match. I think what I want to draw your attention to the passes from Complexity, 163 passes, uh, sort of, I wouldn't say dominating the ball, but dominating large portions of the game. And you also saw down there as well, not many tackles, not many interceptions. It wasn't really a, a scrappy game. It was quite end-to-end. -end. And I'm a little bit shocked, to be honest, that the XG wasn't higher with the amount of chances that we created. We can see you all at home on the Twitch chat. And I've got one very, very simple question for you. Who do you think is going to go through. Put a C in the chat if you think it's going to be complexity. Put a P if you think it's going to be PSG. I want to see it fill up. Or if you're a... not that lazy, you can put an SG on the end as well. Maybe PSG yeah. on, on the end. See what <laughs> you think is going to win this one. This is a two-legged game of FIFA. As it stands at the halfway point, complexity lead by two goals to one, as Richard said. Let us know in the chat who you think is going to come out on top in this one. PSG. Now back in their traditional home strip from left to right in this one. Complexity in the red. What changes this time, which feels crazy, Rich. We'll go from eight teams down to seven after this game. As we'll say goodbye to another team. This could be a brilliant start. It was a clever pass for a second. I thought R9 was just going to chest it down there and go on his own, but he looked for the flick on. We can see a lot of Cs. A lot of complexity love in that Twitch chat right now. We'll see if the uh, the Twitch chat is right on their assumptions. As we all know, the Twitch chat is never wrong. So uh, whatever happens, they'll be right. And just to tease this one to you as well, next game tonight, we'll see oh. Fnatic oh. take on RB Leipzig. We are talking Tex, we're talking Anders, we're talking the world champion Umit. And of course, Diogo Mendes. What oh. a game that one plans to be. What a chance this could be. It's getting scrappy on the edge of the box there. Love a piece of play from Complexity. Again, Rich, who is it at the back? It's that man, Vieira. Stopping all the danger. Complexity, if they can just add another one onto their tally, it will take a little bit of pressure off them. And the flip side will mean that we have to see PSG come out. Maybe try and go for the game. You win this game, you are into Wednesday's semi-finals. Top four guaranteed, $25,000 also in your back pocket. Weeks of hard work and, I mean, the complexity, Rich, hours of travelling. Well, then they get over, they got here on Thursday, so they've been here quite a few days, acclimatising to the time zone, getting some EU practice in, which is really, really important as well. And they feel good. If it's level in the second leg, they'll be in the semi-finals. World Complexity Gaming, they'll be coming back on Wednesday. They've also sort of said in a couple of interviews, they feel like they've got a point to prove after what they've achieved in past years. Yes, as I said, it wasn't a great. FIFA 22 for them. Their own stands, they were grouped in Copenhagen. 
Club World Cup, a tournament that they've had so much success in past times. The page has been turned. They won four games in the group stages, drew three of them, then they lost one game, and that was to MGCF, the Brazilian side, who didn't even make it into the knockout stages. We'll have a week's on from that. They lead two goals to one as it stands. What a ball this could be. Great. Piece of trickery there. Just a unique pass as well. Very rarely do we see a chipped ball into the box like that on a slightly sort of more direct angle. Went to just diagonal it in. PSG showing us a few different passes and I'm not going to call it desperate, but attempts at getting that ball into dangerous areas. They've still got a lot of time left to play. So far though, Rich, we spoke about possession and passes last game. First 30 minutes here, it's been all there. Complexity is so dangerous though. One attack like this, and the rest could be history. Ronaldinho, down that byline where it's so hard to defend, it is. Defended well that time though. Massive switch of play. Mendy. Ronaldinho, no way through. Defended well by Complexity. Three red shirts just around the Brazilian icon. This is nice. The nice triangles in and around the box. Stopped in the tracks. By Zidane and pull it. Not a bad partnership, them two. Controlling pretty much everything in front of that back four. One thing I've noticed straight away in this second leg, they're a lot more tentative uh, defensively are PSG to pull players out of position. They're not allowing the space out wide in those areas where complexity hurt them in the first leg. Oh, no. Finds Ronaldinho, good feet. This is Encanto. Oh, lovely cutback. And Bappe, who else would it be? He struck once in the first time, and he strikes for a second time in the second leg. And just like that, a two-goal cushion wiped away. Back to square one. Game on. Fabulous dribbling inside the box. He, he saw Vieira. He had Ronaldinho in, in his path, and he saw him just sort of backing off. Didn't really fancy their tackle. It was an outstanding couple of step overs to create the space and then fire that ball back into a dangerous area, just putting it on a plate. And whatever they've done to Mbappe or whatever he's done to, to his own in game item across that incredible World Cup campaign he had in that final, it's made him into even more of a monster. And I'm sure that we've probably got an inevitable team of the year killing Mbappe right around the corner. He has been unbelievable. Two goals, who else would it be? Just tastes that a little bit better, doesn't it, for the PSG players? It's the only PSG man on the pitch. Scoring both of your goals. The best thing of all, we've still got 45 minutes of this. Here's R9, edge of the box, Amar. Looking for his teammate, Amar still on his own. Good feet, brilliant feet. Is he going to come back for a second time? It nearly did. It just had to offload it. He'll be kicking himself right there because he did so well inside the box. The ball roll scoop turn to create the space. And I think there was just a pass to his left-hand side, just a simple knock across the box. I think we've all been there, Rich, isn't it? When you're on one of those runs. you just got to hit it. Just doesn't stop, does it? it? The you skills are there, it, the yeah. combinations are there, and the space is just opening up. Maybe in hindsight, that extra pass would have made all the difference. See the half-time stats there, zero shots. It's uh, one-way traffic, wasn't it, PSG? All Amar and Encante in that opening 45. Quite a serious interview as well from Amar, wasn't it? It's like, look, this is our full-time job. We've got to go out and put in a big performance. No doubt there will be some pressure on their shoulders. This is the best run we've seen from PSG in a, a long time. You cannot forget, Rich, the roster of players they've had in past times, the success they've had, the level of French players on their books. It's a 
huge It's one of the biggest football clubs in world football, PSG. I mean, when you look at that team, there has to be a level of performance with it. And in previous FIFAs, there's been some great players there that have done some fantastic things. But if they were to progress through to the top four, it would be one of their crowning achievements as an esports team, PSG. I have to remember what group they came out of as well, Richard. Ajax were in that group and so are Man City. And Heretics. This is a big chance, though, from a free kick. Complexity. The golden chance here. 22 metres out, player on the line. This could be a $25,000 free kick. He plays it short instead. Great feet from R9. Still R9, reverse Ooh. elastic call, and somehow... It finds its way into the back of the net. I wasn't sure what was going on from that free kick. They played it short. Then it just became a little bit of a skill compilation. The next thing you know, it's in the back of the net. Complexity back in front. Three goals to two. Oh, that's going to be in every single replay package throughout the day. What a finish. We just hear there a couple of words coming out. From J-Mark talking about on the replay again. I'd... Sticking in the formation, not changing. You've got the lead. Let's try and build on that now. It was a lateral heel to heel, which a skill move we rarely see. Then a La Croquette, a reverse elastico around the corner. It's such, such a great finish. I, I, I want to see it again. Look, I want to see this goal again. Thank you, production, for supplying the goods. The lateral heel to heel into the La Croquette, into the reverse elastico. Well, look, for all that great play, for all that great attacking play, I'm asking questions of Henry van der Sar. He's got quite a lot to it, I think. Well, that was Joxan, the captain of this team. He said he was the oldest competitor left in the tournament. That was the extra couple of years of experience showing from the Mexican. Well, they've had a lead twice now in this time. Can they hold on to it this time round? Or is it going to be an instant reply from PSG? who naturally in that pause, Rich, have probably changed a lot of things. Well, they had to, didn't they? I mean, complexity now from a quite a poor second leg, you would say. First half, they were under the cosh. Now back in front. Pele. Corner. PSG's turn to make something happen. They scored a corner which was pretty remarkable in the group stage against Ajax. They always have a surprise package up their sleeve, do the French duo. This time, what have they got? Mbappe tees there, you can just see his run. He's in a battle with Zidane, he's going to then fake it back outside. There's Hullet towards the front post, Hullet's there! Good contact, good set piece, just too much on it from Rude Hullet. Powering the headers right over the crossbar. Again, I love the, the variations in the set pieces, whether it's Joxan and Maxi or Encante and Amar. They've really taken a look at how this year with the, the corners and free kicks being completely revamped, what can they get out of it? 30 minutes away from a top four finish Wednesday. They'll be back in action. Whoever wins this game, complexity could be that team. Heavy touch. Kunku. Let's get dispossessed. We'll jump back into a pause again. 29 minutes away. Just a chance to have a chat. Work out how we're going to see this game out for the last 30 minutes. We're good for now. The resounding message coming out of that complexity camp. On the other side of the screens, PSG Esports. Very interesting high five. High five meets fist. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. They have the team cohesion. They have the chemistry. Do they have the minerals to come back from a losing position once again? Two nil down before in this series. Do not write them off. They have been the surprise package in this tournament. Start to finish. Could be dangerous. Mbappe driving. R9 can't find a way round Lucio. However, 
Plexi still have the ball. Whipped in. Back to Arnaud, the goal scorer of the only goal in this second leg. Bit frantic now as both teams naturally starting to panic. They know what is up for grabs. How close they are. Getting to the next stage. But also how close to being knocked out of the tournament. Mbappe, he's done it twice before. Can he do it for a third time? In a battle there with Vieira, well played again. It's all about game management, playing the right pass at the right time for Jocelyn and Maxi right now. Taking those extra couple of seconds out of the game. If they score one more, it will certainly be game set a match. He's bundled Ball his way through. Finally, and Kunku. Couple of ball rolls. This is Joxan still down the byline. Trent Alexander Arnold and Lucio were needed there just to double up to win the ball back for PSG. Awful oh! touch. This could be a gift. He's offside, R9. That is also a gift on the flip side from the linesman. Pause queued. Probably wanted to get it in just before the, uh, the free kick was played. Alfonso Davies in a running race with Pele, who's happy to get back and defend. Hurl it. This is nice. Ronaldinho, one more pass back to R9. Good idea with the skills. Unfortunately, the conviction of them just didn't really work. It's a great tackle at the back. This could be it, Rich. They can conclude it now, maybe, if they need to. Pele back to R9. One more pass or not! The ultimate! Killer blow, it was Mbappe that scored the goal against PSG. And that goal there could be the difference to send complexity into a top four semi-final. And PSG back to the hotel to pack their bags. First playing back tomorrow morning as it stands. Well, if there's a time to go into a this pause, you've got to go for it. It's not a bad time to, to pause the game for complexity, though. They wanted the pause. Now they're up by two goals on the aggregate scoreline. Their own numbers forward for PSG Esports. That's the only route to keep yourself alive here in the EA Sports Cup. Complexity are that team. They are that team that seem to pull it out of the fire every single time. They might be underdogs. They might have flown halfway across the world to be here but they always seem to perform. No matter how far they have to travel, Rich, as well. What, back in Milan all those years ago, they travelled there, one of the penalty shootout in a grand final that was one to remember. Years on, they are still a team. Fair play to complexity as well. The commitment they've made into this eSport. 2019, they signed both of these two. You know how you always play in the middle? Now it's like two wings. Lots of conversation in that complexity camp. I think it's just a good thing as well. They were talking about when, what time to sort of play for the last attack, how they want to try and address these final 10 minutes. You know what you're going to be up against. You know it's going to be an all-out press. Well, I'd like to sit here and say two goals would be enough with just under 10 minutes left, but we've seen some wild things in our time. Ooh. The air is not happy about it. And so he shouldn't be. Tackle of the day. Sign it off already. There is an award for that, then Vieira might, uh, might be up for that one. Possession changes hands again. It would be remarkable. If Mbappe can drive this attack again. Oh! Things moving, Mbappe. Amor has to score, he will. That is so special. What a goal. The step overs proving so, so strong. Especially in a moment when you just need someone to step up from the crowd. Oh. Grab this game by the scuff of his neck. He was ice skating around the box. He's that. Momentum moving now for PSG. Oh. And Pape again, Amar. is on the run of his life at the moment. Complexity, just doing everything they can. As PSG continue to pile on the pressure. It's another win back or not. The ball's bouncing around frantically. It's theirs to hold on to now, Complexity. A minute left plus additional time. Corner, corner given away. Ah, 
it's a tough one. The composure of that PSG goal as well, just while this is in the corner. He saw the keeper coming out and just took an extra touch past him. One more chance for PSG. Surely not, surely not. Two minutes left on the clock. The pressure. It's got to go. The ball has to move, and it has to move quickly. Oh, it's a terrible touch, and Kunku's going to get it back. Oh, what to a win. tackle! Yeah, yeah, Torre. And with that tackle, there, complexity, you can say, are in the top four of the EA Sports Cup. Twenty-five thousand dollars guaranteed. What an opening matchup we've oh. seen tonight here at the EA Sports Cup. And the best thing of all, we've still got three more quarterfinals coming your way. It really doesn't get much better than that. What an end-to-end -end game. What a series. Complexity clutching up when they needed to most. But PSG with an outstanding performance. They'll feel hard done by. They feel as though they probably should have got more out of the game. But complexity guarantee and confirm their spot in the top four. And they are two matches away from being your EA Sports Cup champions. No matter where it is, Richard, no matter the year, no matter the FIFA title, one thing you can guarantee is complexity in knockout stages in the tournament. That's an extra level added onto their perch. Now, top four guaranteed, $25,000. And the only team, Rich, out of Europe, that have made it to the knockout stages go one step further. Let's talk about PSG very quickly. Commiserations to these two. It is a newly created team that has had an unbelievable run. There are moments of magic in that performance. That goal from Amar there at the end. What a run with Mbappe. I know it won't mean much now, but still a top eight finish in your first 2v2 tournament as a duo is pretty good going. And that's that's the level of these quarterfinals. PSG win that on any other match. But in the quarterfinals, you have to be perfect. And unfortunately, they weren't. Well, there we have it. Quarterfinal one done and dusty. Complexity into the semi-finals for now. It's over to Rachel and Mike. Well, complexity in semi-finals. And a very happy Mike LaBelle is alongside me. He never doubted them. It was intense. <laughs> it I, felt, was... I felt some drama in that game. I mean, can we safely say they are... They're one of the best ever 2v2 partnership. They're the most established 2v2 partnership. I definitely think they can be in that, that Mount Rushmore, if you will, of 2v2s. I mean, granted, 2v2s haven't been going on that long. But they but have had been going on that long. Year after year after year. They have. I mean, they're two time world champions. They're now into the top four in the world again this year. And let's see how they did it then. In leg two, obviously, they kept taking the lead. PSG kept coming back. In the end, though, this is how they wrapped it up, Mike. And this is what you would expect in elimination football. Beautiful work there from Ronaldinho. It really starts out, and you see the energy in the room here shift with PSG, a lot of confidence. Uh, you see R9 again working. They're doing a lot of different skill moves here. We've seen a lot of work from the goalkeeper. You see it gets a little bit of emotional, shall we say, back there, the reactions. I love this goal. We're going to look at this later. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Uh, individual moments of greatness. You see R9 doing everything on his own, takes the team on his back. I would love to know if that was Jackson that scored that goal or if it was Maxi. Uh, I think it's the goal of the day, definitely the goal of the tournament maybe this far. I know it's just getting underway. And you see what's better than a little bit of that extra cushion is getting yourself the two goal spread. And they needed that two goal spread as well. As you see, it gets very, very dramatic. Uh, but a little bit of a rebuttal, a step over is always overpowered right now. You're gonna see tons of those skills, but it was a little too late for PSG and they're going home slightly early. And you see it kind of closed out there from Jackson and Maxi again. Both guys showing what it means for, uh, to them as a team, as a collective. And I also think it's another great way to start the day, start the tournament, and send a message to the rest of the competition. The only North American team. Well, especially for Mike Lebel, of course. But in answer to your question there, I think it was Joxan because Maxi's uh, jaw nearly hit the floor there in <laughs> response to that third goal, which Mike uh, will get to. If it to. wasn't here claiming it, I'm sure he'll claim <laughs> he will. It. Quick word, though, on PSG. Obviously, mm -hmm. I think we kind of wrote them off in the first half. They really came back strongly, and they could have almost equalized on 90 minutes. Well, I also think like they should definitely be proud of themselves. To get out of the group stage, I think they were written off for a lot of the, the, the fans and also even people that are on the back end. They weren't going to make it out of the groups, and they did that. They got through a lot of different competitors. We talked about some of the other teams in their group as well, so congratulations to them, and, and they made it a good opener for the day. Top eight in the world. I mean, massive achievement all the same. Well, we've teased that third goal then. It was a Yoxan goal because Maxi, like I said, his jaw fell to the floor. <laughs> Mike, you're going to break that down for us in this analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. I would love to. And it's truly just a, a moment of individual showmanship. You, you see here, quick free frame, but I'm going to break down what you see and why it's so important. I, I said it's a masterclass 
He's going to give you this lateral heel to heel. You have to beat that first defender, or that midfielder in this case. Then you have a cancellation with the cross, the La Croqueta, going into a reverse elastico for the finish. Five star weak foot. And you know, it's so nice. Why don't we see it twice? We're just going to bring it back. You don't need anything extra here. Look at this lateral heel to heel. There's the cancellation. You resurface the reverse elastico, and you don't have a weak foot. Vandersar's card out of position. It's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. You can insert a superlative here. You name it, we talk about it, but it should definitely be on a top five, maybe at the end of the day. I mean, if the performance wasn't a statement, that from Yoxan as the captain was a massive statement to the entire community. We talk about being ice cold. You've got all the composure. You don't feel the nerves. You're on the biggest stage. It's just you out there and you pull that out? <laughs> Just saying. Well, it's cold outside and it's even colder in here <laughs> from that performance. Well, let's have a look at the bracket then. Our first teams are into the semi-finals on Wednesday. That goes to Complexity Gaming. 4-3, that win over PSG Esports. Next up, though, let's just cast our eyes downwards. It's a massive matchup. RB Leipzig Gaming. They're the, probably the most feared, I'm going to say, 2v2 partnership in the competition. Who gets the pleasure? Oh, those two local boys do. It's Team Fnatic up against RB Leipzig Gaming after this short break. The EA Sports Cup is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Compete in PlayStation Tournaments. Win your share of cash prizes, FIFA points and more as you face off in foot and club competitions. Sign up for weekly and monthly tournaments on your PS4 console or at compete.playstation.com to test your skills on the pitch. Think you have what it takes? Yes, if you think you've got what it takes, then make sure you get involved. Right, welcome back to the EA Sports Cup. What a first matchup we had. And let me tell you, the drama, the tension, it's just building because there's plenty more FIFA 23 action coming your way. Right, let's introduce our next competitors to the stage. First up, please welcome the team that secured the highest points finish in the entire group stage, the winners of Group B, it's RB Leipzig. These guys will be looking at their opponents backstage, knowing they've got it all to do. I can quickly chat to them. Welcome, it's great to have you back. Oh, mate, I'm coming straight to you just on this one. Fnatic Techs, Diogo, they'll say they're the best in the world, but you're here to cause an upset tonight. Of course, we are confident. Uh, we finished the group really, really well uh, last month. Uh, we didn't lose any games, so uh, we are really confident. But we know, of course, our opponents are also really good. So I think it will be a tough match. Right, well, good luck. I'll let you go off and get yourself sorted. Let's introduce our next team. The next team that are hoping to knock them off the pedestal. The team that has shown no fear in the lead up to this fixture. The runners up of Group C, it is Fnatic. Guys, welcome. It's great to have you here. You know this stage very well. Both of you have been on the biggest stages when it comes to the FIFA esports scene. Diogo, I'll start with yourself, but there's nothing bigger than playing against RB Leipzig and, of course, Vergang and Umet. No, I disagree, man. It's just another game. Um, we just have to go out there, play our game, and uh, if we do, we will win. Tex, if you were to say, looking at all of the opponents that you're coming up against or could possibly be coming up against, are these the most difficult out of the eight? 
Hey man, they're the best team in the tournament probably. You've got the world champion and Anders Vergang, the people that can't be beaten. I have a feeling that you guys are... Uh, mind games are going on here. Are you, are you saying that you're the underdogs going into this one? Absolutely. They finished top of the group, we didn't. They finished on 20 points, we finished on 12. How are, they, how are we not the underdogs? Tex, what's happened to you guys? I mean, normally you're coming out here, you've got plenty of confidence, but it feels like you're being quite modest. Nah, it's certain how it is, isn't it? We're really underdogs. And, um, you know, it's the first time in a while, but, you know, we all own it. We're going to the lobby, we play our game, and hopefully it's enough. Right, well, let's see what happens. I'll let you go and get ready. Brilliant. I like the modesty in that one. As you can see, the countdown timer has started. We are getting closer to some more FIFA 23 action. So let's get into it. Let's introduce Ryan and Brandon. Thank you very much, Carwin. Yes, what a quarter-final this one is on paper. When we first started this tournament, Ryan, if you looked at two teams, we're like, if that could be a knockout game worth yep. $25,000, you'd be like, yes, please, let's just get it booked in now, done and dusted. It is a reality, and it's coming up literally in about one minute's time. What a game this one plans to be, Ryan. It's the, the highly anticipated game, and of course, you've got Tex. They're, they're playing it down a little bit, but I believe they're confident. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a reason why Tex is maybe not fully confident. That's because there's a guy on the opposite side of the chair where they're sitting in. His name's Anders Vergang. He's young. He's 16. And this is a little bit more about him. <laughs> 536 games without losing. It looks to be a double for RB Leipzig, but who has got the goal? Is it Vergang with it? A couple of step overs, of course it is. There is so much anticipation in the air for Anders Vergangs. I know they will win every match. Looking to do something historic after being 4-0 down on the triple! 4-0 yeah! to 4-4! Four, four. Who is captain? Your are Umit. I'm the captain. Oh, yeah! captain over there! Well, you probably know this man from Foot Champions. Over 500, I think, 29 games unbeaten, or maybe more than that, 535 yeah, games yeah. or something on those yeah. lines. He has created an era for himself, his own era. He has had question marks over them. Could he come to LAN? Could he face up against these sort of players? And he's answered all of that. He plays currently for the best 2v2 team that we've seen in this tournament. Yep, exactly. As you said, before he even started competing, he had a target on his back as people called him the best 1v1 player. And of course, he held, held himself accountable with his ability. And he said they started off really well in this 2v2 tournament. Yeah, well, what is interesting, before we had a winter's break, there was some interviews that took place in our last week of action, including Diogo Fnatic. And he had this to say. I talked to Tex a little bit when you guys qualified and he said, well, I kind of hope we get Leipzig. Did you feel the same way with that energy or is that maybe just Tex like putting on yeah. a little bit? No, nah, yeah. I mean, I'd rather have a harder quarterfinal on paper um, and then have, I guess, an easy road. Also, like, I'm not scared of anyone. With all due respect, Uma and Anders, I'm not scared. And I'm sure Donny isn't scared either, so we'll be fine. And normally you guys are under the most pressure because of everybody's got their eyes on you. It might be a little bit different in this circumstance. Could that work to your advantage? Um, no. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care about that. Like, whatever. If we're the underdogs or not, I'd, with all due respect, I do not think we're the underdogs here. But, oh. yeah. Um, no, I don't really care. Well, look, again, you're laughing about it. What's your thoughts <laughs> on that? Because that was before the winter break. That was back in December before we stopped for Christmas. Obviously, back now many weeks later. What's changed there in the mindset since that conversation, do you think? I'll be honest. I think it's just all mind games. Diogo and Tex, they know what they need to do today if they want to progress into the next round. But so do the, the RB Leipzig boys as well. And again, I think both teams should be confident. No, they should be indeed. I mean, let's not forget about Tex. A lot of people know Tex. When you say, what's FIFA Esports? Who's, oh, that FIFA Pro player Tex? Oh, yeah, that's why, because this is what he's achieved. FIFA 19 might spring to mind because it was no doubt one of his most successful years we've, we've ever seen from a FIFA player. In that, included the last time he won a 2v2 tournament, Ryan. It was yep. the FIFA E-Club World Cup where he was teammates of Nicholas, believe it or not, and they won a tournament in London. Five-foot Champions Cup in his time. Of course, first in the European North playoffs in past times as well. And he has won that e Champions League Invitational. There's a reason why he's got such a pedigree and so many fans in this scene. And there'll be a lot of people watching tonight, Ryan, really spewing him and his teammate, Diogo Wom. Yeah, definitely. Tex, as you said, is a household name in the FIFA scene, not just in the UK scene, but worldwide. You could say, for me, the most coveted FIFA player that has ever been. He's won it all, other than obviously the World Cup, which is just slightly hasn't fallen his way, but everything else he's, he's done. And he's be hoping today him and Diogo can advance to the semi-finals. Well, I've got a question, Ryan, for you as this game does kick off right now. This is your second quarter final of the EA Sports Cup. Winner of this will play complexity on Wednesday in a semi-final.
Yeah, which can pretty much change the game. Just to get your thoughts, what can we expect from this game between these two? Because look, on paper, we have got RB Leipzig who netted in 24 goals compared to Fnatic, who only scored eight across yeah. eight <laughs> games in group play. That's yeah. got to change. Of course, it's a drastic difference. You can see the amount of goals scored for Red Bull like, or RB Leipzig. They, they go forward a lot. They're not afraid to push forward. The step overs in the final third as well is very effective. And I'm actually anticipating a high scoring game. From, from both teams or from one? <laughs> you put them in the spot for a prediction. I'm going to say, I want to say Fnatic edge it. I'll be honest. I don't, it's hard to call with 2v2. There's no real out and out best team in my opinion. I think a lot of teams are very level, but I think that I, I just get a, a good aura from Tex and Diogo today to feel as if they, they back themselves to, to win the game. Well, of course, Tex and Diogo kicking from right to left in this one. They were teammates last year as well, which included a couple of runs they had in London, Team of the Season Cup, and of course the FIFA E Club World Cup. RB Leipzig, though, weren't able to make all of those events. They had success in the virtual Bundesliga. They were club champions last year. That was these two first real chance to work as a team. And you can't forget, Ryan Anders was only 16 not that long ago. So he could only compete in a handful of events as this one comes in. Two hands on it from Donnarumma. I mean, both duos have had such a different start, you could say, into their FIFA eSports career so far. Yeah, exactly. As we said, we've, we've mentioned Anders a few times, but we have to, of course, give credit to Uma, who is actually the world champion winning the... FPWC last year, so of course he is coming into the tournament with a huge amount of confidence, even the recent FGS1. I believe it was a top four finish for himself. Same with Tex, top four, or was it? No, it was top eight for him, I believe it was, and top four for Tex. Um, and of course, it wasn't the best of tournaments for both Diogo and Vergang. But again, fantastic duos, fantastic in at the 1v1 space, so they need to, to show up today and perform. Well, let's just talk about that very, you know, quickly. It is crazy that Ume is the world champion at the moment. But still, we sit yeah, and we talk yeah, about just, Anders. Yeah, we talk honestly. about Anders more and more and more. And if you look at the duo, which is trying to defend this attack from Fnatic right now, he just seems overpowered a lot of the time, yeah. doesn't he? I mean, he's accepted that role, but Anders is just so vocal. You'll see it across this game. If things aren't going right or if things are going well, he's only 16. He's the youngest player in this tournament. But by God, he packs a punch. Absolutely. And I think with, with Uma, he sort of just gets his head down and progresses through tournaments. He, he sort of reminds me of, of Razek back in the day. Every time you reach a latter stage of a tournament, you anticipate Umut being there. Whether it's the semi-finals, quarter-finals, the finals, going the whole distance and winning it, he's always amongst the best players in Europe. And his consistency was rewarded last year, winning the, the grand finals. But as you said, first year competing for Anders is huge. As we mentioned, how much stature he has in the FIFA scene without even playing one competitive game. It was just all from foot champions and it led to, to the stage that well, where he is today. Yeah, in our sort of pre-season hype up to this tournament, there were so many people saying one team they wanted to avoid was Fnatic or RB Leipzig. Now we have caught what a core final in front of us. These two going head to head. Fnatic so far have had all of the ball. There's Yaya Torre oh. fancies that one from the edge of the box. It was time green, but that's a warning shot fired. They might have only scored eight goals. But they're looking to add a ninth form to their tally. Corner to come in now towards that area and just like that Fnatic take the lead what a start fantastic start from Fnatic it's been all Fnatic from the beginning of the game and it all came from that long shot on the edge of the box there with Yaya Torre the great dribbling in to the green Traveller but then the corner there's going to be a lot of corner goals no shock of course how effective it is this year the driven corners in and when you have Players with that stature in the box, you've got the likes of Yaya Torre, Rude Hullet, Van Dijk, Vieira. You're always going to pose a threat when corners are whipped in. And it's a deserved 1-0 lead for Fnatic, in my opinion. Well, well, well. If the time green finish from Yaya Torre was not enough of a warning shot, I don't know what would have been. Fnatic lead by a goal to nil. Zero reaction. They know it's a long old road. These two legs of FIFA. In front of us, we can, of course, not forget, Ryan, that you did take part in this tournament. You were representing Man City alongside Chels as this chance comes in for RB Leipzig. What changes now in terms of the approach to these games being two legs? Because when it was one leg, it was very, very different in terms of the approach for a lot of teams. We saw it, especially for RB Leipzig, which is a case of, and focus, score loads of goals and score early. Yeah, of course, with a, a best of one, it's, it's sort of a, a thing where if you concede, you kind of are forced to try and get the game back. 
um, from that deficit position because, again, you don't really have a lot of time to play with. However, of course, with the best of two, you have the extra game. You sort of use the first leg just to feel out your opponent, their game style, the formation they're using, the personnel, and how they build up their attacks. But again, with the best of one, it's, hard, it's much harder to do that. You could maybe do that for maybe the first half, but even then you still leave yourself with not a lot of time to work with. So again, the best of two format sort of works more for, in my opinion, teams like Fnatic, who are very, very disciplined. You've got um, Tex and Diogo, who, of course, when they take the lead, they're not afraid to keep possession. I think it works well for complexity as well. A great example, who won in the first round today that we saw. You've got Riders coming up later on as well, another team that I think it favours. Well, as much as we've sort of criticised Fnatic of the lack of goals they scored defensively. It's been great. They have been yeah. really, really impressive, Ryan, throughout. I think they've only conceded six goals across their eight group games, being one of the lowest alongside TGNIP, of course, that duo of Levy David and Oli Lito. Nearly 40 minutes gone here. Fnatic lead. That's Texan Diogo on the right hand side of your screen. I'm hitting Anders Vergang. They might not have dropped a game so far. As it stands right now, it's not looking pretty. It's very structured from Tex and Diogo with the way they're defending. They're not really pulling out players out of position. This oh, this could be nice. Mbappe, great save, if that you can call. It came off the knee and needed Van der Sar just to back it up. But they might have been caught out on that moment. But you're right, yeah. Ryan. It looks very structured at the moment, very organised. It's almost a, a slight jinx there from myself. But again, as we you just mentioned here, it's very structured and organised. I think it's a four... I'm not too sure about the formation. I think it might be a 4 2 3 I'm not entirely sure. But the way that they're, they're building up their attacks, they're waiting for the passing lanes to open, doing the step-overs into space to get the speed boost. It's a great play there from Tex. It's Cafu. Tex, the captain of this team, driving down the byline and putting on a plate for his teammate. Two goals to nil, Fnatic leads. They might have come into this and said, look, we're the underdogs. But what a start they've had. They've silenced RB Leipzig. Sensational play there from Tex there, darting down the line. And of course, it's something that they look for at the start of the, the game. We saw that they look towards the, the byline very frequently, trying to play the driven pass across goal. It didn't work out, but it worked out then. As we say, we go in 2-0 into the halftime break. And as we said, we haven't seen anything at all from Umber and Anders so far. Well, when we've got a moment, just to have a brief for ourselves, Ryan. Let's go down to Carl Walker, who's joined by the coach complex. Who must be over the moon. Thank you, Brandon. Yes, I am indeed. Jesse, you'll be the man in the middle of the complexity, guys. When they face one of these two out of Red Bull Leipzig and Fnatic, who do you want, who don't you want, considering that you know that Fnatic are 2-0 up? Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. We don't. We're not too, too concerned about who we play. We don't really watch uh, too many other teams, but I mean, based off now, you have to say Red Bull. Uh, we know how good the personnel is for both teams, uh, so neither game is going to be easy, but I'd say for now, uh, you know, we'd rather play uh, Red Bull for sure. Right, well, we'll see what happens. Fnatic 2-0 up. Let's get back to the second half of the first leg. Cheers, Carl. I mean, if I was asked that question, I'd say neither, if possible. <laughs> yeah. But complex, Steve. Quick word on those, Ryan. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. As, as Max said in his interview early on at the start of the, the Masters tournament, they sort of have, have been disrespected. I think people forgot their, their accolades. Of course, last year they didn't have the greatest cup. I believe it was in the Team of the Season Cup. They didn't perform anywhere near their standards or previous standards anyway. But they've come into this tournament, they've backed their ability, they've put the work in and they deserve to be amongst the top four teams. Back on the way for this one. If you have missed the headline news so far, that is... The Fnatic are beating the force, the German force that has been RB Leipzig game. It. And there's a it. So far, silence cannot find their feet in knockout football here in London. After a dominating display in the group stages, 24 points they racked up. Sorry, 20 points they racked up. They're scoring 24 goals in total. No doubt one of the biggest matches you'll remember if you followed this tournament all the way through is that Fnatic game. Shot from distance. We'll take it back for a free kick instead. Ooh. What can we see here? Played short. Zidane back to R9. That's not going to make them happy at all there with Ronaldinho and R9 just run into each other. It's just a bit disorganised. I know you can't do much about that sometimes. I was going to say, I thought that was in maybe shooting territory. We've seen a lot of direct free kicks go in this year. 
I think the first goal we saw as well in this competition in the group stage was actually a free kick from Tech. So I was potentially seeing if maybe Umut or Anders could have lined up for a direct free kick at that moment. But again, played short is also a, a viable option we saw with Yoxan as well in the first game of the day. Fantastic play on the edge of the box to score. But other than that, though, the, the shot outside the box, that's really all they can resort to, as we see Fnatic build up again, but it wasn't meant to be with that pass. Look at this press, it's nice. Very nearly. It's on a room up, found himself in a spot of bother. Driving forwards. Forward finds Pele. Diogo back to Tex. Tex with that blue caster above his head. His teammate with the circle is green. Circle. Go for the cross here. Yaya Torre with the run. Watch it. This could be special. Oh, it was clever. Diogo tried to find the one more pass. And if it came off, it would have been magnificent, Ryan. But in that moment, I think he had to be greedy. Would have been a pass we associate. We call it the, the German cross in the FIFA community. It's something that you associate with Umut himself. Triggering a run from deep with a midfielder or a centre back and whipping the ball in, and it usually results in an opportunity. And it was, but it was a bad touch there as we see Umut charging into the box. Great Played. defending again from Tex there. Proud Liverpool fan is Tex, and that interception of Virgil van Dijk might have been that little bit sweeter. Keep an eye on the red cursor of an RB Leipzig player. That is Anders. His team at Umut. That yellow triangle does well, Anders, to win the ball back for his team. Great press from R9. He's going to be panic stations, though, sooner rather than later. If they do not find a way back, Mbappe, great feet, Umit. Finds Anders, edge of the box. This is where he has to come out and play. Again, Virgil van Dijk called upon and delivering a superb time tackle. You can see the... They've just managed everything, yeah, Ryan. I was just about to say, you can see the way the tempo of this, this second leg has changed with the way... Tex and Diogo are building up. They're not rushing any passes forward. They're only going forward if the, the opportunity arises. They're not being too risky, even though that pass there was an offside one there. But again, two goals down from... Well, they're in a position now. We've seen them 4-0 down and come back. But I think this could be a different proposition with the way... I just don't see how RB likes them. They're not creating anything. They need to, to sort of up the tempo, maybe create more chances they just resort into the stepovers on the edge of the box, but they're, they're not really getting there. If we can, let's just get close into that booth of RB Leipzig to see if anything is being said between these two. Not much from Anders. You can imagine he's not happy with how things are going. But how important is it, Ryan? You've been in these situations, in, you know, winning and losing in this tournament. When you go into pause like that, it is natural to just want to just sit there and say nothing. Yeah. But you need to talk it out, don't you? It is. It's very, very true. As you said, it's very easy to fall into the... You get, you kind of get deflated very easily, especially. Well, now it's a little bit different because you do have the second leg to fall back on. But at that moment in time, if you're down by a couple of not too long left to go in the game, you sort of think to yourself, "Is it going to be your day?" And that interception there potentially could mean that it might not be. But again, there's still a long way to go. We've still got the rest of this leg and the second leg to play. But the aim here from for Fnatic, anyway, is just to slow possession, slow the the clock down, just keep possession and make sure they don't give up any easy chances for RB Leipzig to capitalise on. Silly tackles like that will not help. You can not argue against Fnatic, they have not put a foot wrong so far. Mbappe, this is Tex now. Turn out smart, um it. Enjoyed himself back inside Diogo. One more. Oh no, oh, it's oh. horrendous goalkeeping from Donnarumma. Wow. But they're not going to care, are they? 3 0. Great play there as well, as you, you mentioned the build up there with Tex, with the drag back, sort of bringing it back to the old school Tex using the dribbling on the edge of the box there. Slice of fortune, a huge slice of fortune, but you have to take it when it comes your way at 3 0. To Diogo and Tex. Something comes into my mind here, Ryan. Foot whiz. Yes, I, I know, I know. Foot whiz, oh, I don't RB me. Leipzig. Yeah. What was the score in that game at the half? 4-0. 
<laughs> was four, it's it four, was, four nil, wasn't it? it? Was they were four, four nil, nil down. Yeah. And the full time score was four four. I'm yeah. not saying it's going to be like this, but there's a team that can come back. Maybe it'll be these two, but something has got to change as soon as possible. What blows my mind even more, Ryan, is that throughout the group stages, Fnatic averaged one goal a game. They've just scored three in a quarter final with $25,000 on it and all the pressure. This is without doubt, though, the best I've seen Fnatic play. I know it's easy to say that they're winning against arguably the tournament favourites, so you can say that it's always going to be their best game. But just the build-up play, the discipline, the structure in defence, the composure in possession has been perfect. And rightly so, they go into the second leg, three goals up. Well, I hope RB Leipzig Daniel's got the hair dryer treatment ready because he's going to need something to change the mindset of his two players now who are 3-0 down. They are deflated. You can see them sulking in their chair. It's got to change if there is a way back for them into this tie. But Texan Diogo, wowee. If there's one way to come back into the new year, it's with that. 3-0 they lead at the halfway point in this quarterfinal stage. This would be one hell of an upset and one hell of a storyline. Still so much to come between these two runs. Yep, a long way to go. We've still got 90 more minutes to play for RB Leipzig to try and get back into this game, try and get a foothold in this second leg. But if it's anything to go by from the first leg, they're going to have to make some changes because offensively, I just didn't see anything. They didn't offer anything on going forward. Well, they've got a couple of minutes now because we're off to a quick break. When we return, it's the second leg between these two giants. Will they turn it around RB Leipzig or Fnatic book a spot in the semi-finals? We'll see you in a few. Well, welcome back to London for the EA Sports Cup. If you have just joined us, you're joining for a, a bit of a headline story at the moment. And that is that as it stands, Anders and Umit, 3-0 down at the halfway point. Myself, Brandon Smith and Ryan Basawa guiding you through the action here. Ryan, let's have a look at the summary of that first leg because yep. there is still a second leg to come in this game. But what went wrong? We'll have a look at the highlights before we jump into the, uh, the deeper stats between these two. What a start and what a performance from Fnatic. Yep, it all started off from, a, I'd say, a blistering start from Diogo and Tex for Fnatic. It was a corner that led to the first goal we saw there. So we see build-up play from RB Leipzig. That was, in my opinion, the only chance they sort of had there. But it was this run here from Tex, the driven pass across the goal from Diogo. And it was an easy finish to go 2-0 up going in to half time. And this was another chance here. We called it the German cross whipped in. I think it was a pass or maybe a poor touch there, which could have been another goal for Fnatic. But this is where the goal came towards the last couple of minutes of the first leg. A poor mistake from Donnarumma. Giving an easy goal there for Fnatic. Three goal lead going into the second leg. As we look at the stats here, I was expecting it to be a little bit more favorable in terms of possession and expected goals for Fnatic. But honestly, it is sort of even. Let's have a look at the shots as well, if we can see between the two teams. The shots on the left-hand side of the screen is what RB Leipzig did in the game. They had one shot from the edge of the box, one that came a little bit closer. But on the flip side, you can see where all the goals came from. The three greens were the goals they scored. But what was so impressive, Ryan, was just, yes, they both play such a role in this team. Diogo scored, I believe, two of the goals. But Tex's involvement in making oh, the chance, creating big. the skill moves. Yeah. And even when it wasn't coming off, just making your opponent think, oh my God, I've got Tex running at me, yeah. doing all of these skill moves. I've got to dive in or I've got to just sit back next to you and I've conceded the goal. It's been vintage Tex, as I said. It, it reminds me of the FIFA 19 Tex where anytime you got to the edge of the area, you were sort of frozen because you didn't know what he was going to do, whether it's a reverse elastico, a drag back, a shot cancel. And it's great to see it again, as we said, because 
that sort of what is what separates him from other players. His decision making around the area, the skill move, and again, his lethalness and in creating chances. And you can see three goals to the good. Well, here we go then. Second leg between these two. I'm just looking at both those two and the RB Leipzig side still looks so deflated. Yeah, You've got to get think, going. Yeah, that's sort of a, a bad omen in a way. Maybe they need a goal just to sort of kick them up and pick them up and, and kick them into gear because, again, they just look very, very deflated. They don't seem as if they, they have the belief in their... They don't seem like the team, Ryan. That scored 24, 24 <laughs> goals and yeah. got the point record in the group stages. Yeah. We have to remember, though, that was a little while ago. There's been a, an update since then in the game, of course. That there's been, I wouldn't say a meta shift in terms of what's the most effective way to score goals or play FIFA, but it's changed a little bit. So maybe that potentially suits Tex and Diogo. Well then, RB Leipzig, first chance to get back in the game. Umit wins a corner. Keep an eye on those individual player cursors. Anders with the blue curse above his head. His teammate Umit. If the green text on the flip side in control of the ball now, he's got that red triangle above his players in game cursor in Diogo with that yellow circle. You mentioned that has been a change to the game, right? What can we expect in that change in terms of an, a pro capacity that could be obvious, maybe? <laughs> to be honest, in terms of the actual patch itself, I wouldn't say there's been a, a huge change, but in terms of the way people play the game now, you're going to obviously look for, for crosses, step overs have always been a, a key aspect of, of going forward, but. I just think it suits having a best of two with the way that the game is for Fnatic, especially for Tex in a in a one v one capacity. But in a two in a twos format, maybe that sort of filters down to Diogo as well. I'm not saying he's not a great player. Diogo is is phenomenal and he's proven it over the years. But from what Tex has accomplished, it sort of just fits into the way he plays. And let's be honest. To, to partner with Tex, you need to be a certain type of FIFA yeah, player. You have to be Diogo. Top level. You have to be at the top. And is again, that? Yeah, definitely. It shows how good. Um, Diogo is the fact that Tex can put the trust in his hands as well. And also score the score the goals, yeah, right? Yeah. Cannot look past that these two did have two good runs last year in the only 2v2 majors we saw, which was the E Club World Cup and the Team of the Season Cup. The team that put in the reps, they've faced adversity a few times in these moments. They know what it felt like, and during that, they probably never want to feel it again. Hence why they've come in with such a incredible impact so far. 3-0 they lead, looking for goal number four. He's text now of Mbappe. Trying to do a text likes run into the box. Poor pass there for a moment. Will this come back to happen, Ryan? When do we need to start seeing a goal? I mean, obviously not ASAP, but... Yeah, I'd say... Maybe one by the 60th. I'd 60th. Say, give I'd it say that six, long. Yeah, I'll give it that long. 60th is fair. We've seen um, the amount of goals that have been scored in in late stages in the games across this whole tournament, not just in, of course, the, the knockout stages, but throughout the groups. A lot of late goals. But I'd say to come back from a three goal lead, of course, you're going to have to resort to going constant press. So you see a chance there. The reverse to Lassico wasn't enough to get past the defence of Fnatic there. Well, that was Anders there that tried to. Right, the ultimate piece of movement. Unfortunately, that was unable to happen. It's a good warning sign, though. The only thing that worried me about this duo at times is they've just got to motivate each other. Especially in these moments. The odd pass going astray. Pick your teammate up, get him going. Fnatic just cruising, popping the ball around. Well, there's no tomorrow, though. This is a not a core final. One more pass. Tex makes it for Fnatic. Put on one hell of a show and one hell of a performance. 4 0. See, it's not even a, a celebration from Tex. They sort of just telling Yoga, all right, it's not done yet. Let's keep it going. Let's keep prodding. Let's keep pushing. They want to make a statement here. They don't just want to win this game by a, a couple goals. They want to make sure that. Every other team left in this competition knows and realises that they back themselves to win. They, they know that they can do it. And to beat four goals up against RB Leipzig, I know, as we said, we've seen it done before. So we see a, a shot there. We have seen it done before. But right? I just, but... as I said in the first, um, the first leg, this just feels different with the way that 
Fnatic are playing is so disciplined, they're so structured, and I just don't see how how Uma and Anders come back. I'll be completely honest, I just don't see it. I have to keep giving you that. <laughs> yeah, the, the I facts. Know, I know. I, yeah. Eight goals is all they scored in the group stages. Completely different type of team these look like. Defensively, we knew they were sound, but offensively, there was question marks. Not anymore. Text back, cooking Jarzinho this time back inside to Diogo. Yaya Torre, this is Tex. Oh. Still. This is what is exactly one coming. There's one yeah. coming from him. That's exactly what I'm talking about, though. When he slows down and makes the defender make the decision. Are you going to anticipate me turning left or right? And then once you do and you bite into that challenge, he just completely obliterates you and goes the other way. Tex again, Jarzinho this time. Both Umit and Anders just bearing down on the Brazilian to just try and stop him in his tracks. Diogo. It's great, great movement there from Tex as well. Just to offer the, the run as a supporting pass there with Jerzinho. Nice. Oh, Tex on a play. Diogo. Oh, no. <laughs> the rest is history. Woo. Five. This is, this is, wow. This is top stuff. I'll be honest. This might be the best performance. For sure, it's the best 2v2 performance I've ever seen. I'll be honest, like, as in, this is ridiculous. The team with the lowest points to qualify for the knockout stages as well. We're Fnatic with 12. Forget that, rip up all the stats about group stages. They don't matter anymore. This is what matters, turning up in the knockout stages. Oh. Not looking for five, <laughs> maybe looking for six. Is Diogo going to get six? Surely not. Oh, he could have oh, put on a plate for his yeah, teammate. He could have. But wow, this is... A demolition job. This is destruction here from Fnatic's Tex and Diogo. And as we said, it's just been one-way traffic. It's been outstanding, as I said. I just feel as if... They've not put anything in terms of... Nothing. Tackles, passes, Ryan. Everything has been perfect. perfect. Genuinely, it's been perfect. And as I said, you sort of could say there's been a... There is a... There's a slight rivalry between Tex and Vergang and Anders. There is, because again... People were sort of saying if Anders could compete that, that era when he was going 500 or games unbeaten in foot champs, if he was able to compete, he would have won it all. But then Tex has somebody that has actually won it all. Somebody that sort of, he might feel as if there's been a, an unfair comparison. And I know it's not 1v1, it's 2v2, but he would feel like he's doing it. also, you know, it is worth saying, foot champs to foot champions cups. You know, they're both incredible achievements. Yeah, yeah, you can't fantastic. Away, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. You're right. There is there is that argument there, and there always probably has been. I yeah. mean, everyone wants the the fame on them sometimes as well. And you, you saw the the rise that both of these two did have across the last couple of years. There is more than just a win behind this, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. It's been dominant though. Five nil going into the second half of the second leg. I think we'll see more goals. I don't. I don't think. I think it's going to be a, a job where I think RB Leipzig will have to push bodies forward if they want to just sort of leave the game with any sort of... <laughs> I don't know. You don't want to leave a game thinking what could have been. Maybe if we had pushed forward. But even still, I just think five is too much. Five is way too much. If you're telling me at the start of play today that we're going to see RB Leipzig not leave... Sorry, leave the tournament without scoring a single yeah. goal. I said you're lying. Yep. 5-0. No second chances here, you lose your out, that's it. You can forget about the FIFA E Club World Cup in terms of a short, quick ticket. You're gonna have to go the long way. Here's our night. Maybe a cutback available for RB Leipzig. Runs it out of play, and that sums one up the performance days. so far. Yep, it's just one of those days for Anders and Umer. If I had to ask you, right, before the, a ball was kicked, what would your prediction be? I, I did say it would be high scoring and I, I edged it slightly to Fnatic, but when I meant high scoring, I thought it would have been maybe 6-5, six, 7-6. Seven, six. Well, well, I joked about it, didn't I? I said, what, for both teams or one? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it would be uh, a 5-0 or a 6-0 or anything like that. I thought it would be a 7-4, seven, 7-5 seven, maybe. But yeah, to have it 5-0 is completely one-sided. Great, now. great tripling. Good feet with R9 again. Virgil van Dijk has been immense at the back every single time alongside Maldini. Not many have gone for that duo at the back. Fnatic have, and they've not looked past, and they've kept an incredible defensive line throughout as they look for goal number six now. 
A lot of players in that position yeah, there, just dribbling with Jezina, with text there, would lose possession and be susceptible to a counter. But it's just the way he's managed to, to bait Umar Hernandez in to, to make a challenge and sort of lean one way, pretending he's going to cut inside and then go to, towards the, the byline. It's just an easy way for them to keep possession, keep the ball in um, RB Leipzig's half. And again, it's been outstanding. Cafu over the top. Might just find Hullet. 29 minutes away. You'd have to sit here, Ryan, wouldn't you? For a performance like this, Fnatic to win it all, maybe? Or it's so hard to say. Excited? I think it's too hard to say because I, I said earlier, I don't really see a huge difference in the, in the 2v2 um, scene with, with a lot of the top teams. I think they're all on a similar level. But this, as I said, for me is probably the strongest 2v2 overall performance I've seen. I've seen, I've said how footways are fantastic as well. Um, TG and IP, I think, are great. But I haven't seen an overall performance. There's always been sort of slight drawbacks with the overall performance. Maybe that they've given up an easy chance or anything. But this has been resounding, this game. And what do you think held them back from the performances they showed us in group stage? Was it just the one leg? They couldn't handle the one leg? Or it's, is it just they needed more time to gel and get used to it? Yeah, it's of, of course, the, the group stages was at the start of the, the season. So, of course, the sort of learning the game, how it's meant to be played. Of course, that's a, a very important factor, but they played before. They played last year, they competed last year. They've done um, relatively well, but still below the standards they'd hold themselves accountable for. But I just feel as if they back themselves now. There's a, you can see, I said it's mind game before the game. The way that they're speaking, saying that they're the underdogs, but honestly, we could see that they still back themselves and believe that they're the best team. And they're clearly showing it here. 27 minutes left on the clock. I don't think we're going to be seeing five goals or more. But we may be seeing one or two more added on to the scoreline. When I saw this RB Leipzig team at the start of the tournament, when it was drawn, when it was created, I always thought, it's great when it's going well. I always thought, what would it like when it was going wrong? Yeah. And unfortunately, because they might be able to pull one back now, there's just... There's not much going on. They're not really speaking to each other. It's sort of, with Umar, it's very, a similar theme throughout um, all of his years of competing. He doesn't really give off too emotion when he's playing. So even if he concedes a goal, he wouldn't really, you wouldn't see the frustration in his, in his um, emotion. However, with Anders, he's very, very expressive with his emotions. And each goal they conceded or a chance, a giveaway or an easy gift of possession to Fnatic, you could see that it was deflating him more and more. Mbappe stopped in his tracks, and there's that time. It's Fnatic look for goal number six. Maybe they might just find it now. Tex back with R9. Tex times it green. Semi finals in the books. If it wasn't already done so. And a little celebration to add on. <laughs> That's all we've been missing. That's where the celebration has come out. He felt as if he needed another one just to seal the deal. Maybe because he's been sort of laying it on a plate for Diogo to finish those chances. That was his one there to green and put it into the back of the net. 6-0. Six 6-0. Nil. Six nil. Fnatic against RB Leipzig. To say again, 6. Oh my goodness. 6-0. <laughs> You're not dreaming. Oh my lord. This is a quarter final with $25,000 on the line. And they're not done yet. We oh, want another one. Don't. Tex, he's having the time of his life. You know what? Let them enjoy it. Towards the back post, we want seven. <laughs> All right. <laughs> They've nearly scored eight goals, Ryan. <laughs> they only scored eight goals in the group stages. They've nearly scored eight in one game. I can't believe what I'm I honestly cannot believe it. I cannot believe. There's not even a show of emotion from Anders or Umet. They're just, they've just been glued to the screen, glued to the same spot in shock. And as a coach behind me, they've got their, their coach. It's sort of, what do you say? I How do you... There's any um, late, I late flights tonight back home, but... <laughs> I can't speak, man. We came last night in our group. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, 7-0 seven, seven is, 
<laughs> yeah, there's losses, but there's... And look, there's no doubt about it. This was a result never to be spoken about again on the, the left-hand side of your screen, but there has to be time to look back at it and go, what went wrong from the prep to the way we just did not maybe change things up when it wasn't going well, but on the flip side, Fnatic, maybe they needed a winter break because they've come back like two absolute monsters. Oh, we're going to see a consolation, at least we will. And unfortunately, it won't mean much than just a stat on the screen. 7-1, Fnatic, we can say, will be taking on complexity on Wednesday in a top four semi-final game. Look at this. Well, does like... Tex want one more? Tex with R9, tries to chip the goalie. I hate to say, but someone in the chat just went into this squad battles. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't be saying that, unfortunately. <laughs> These are the scorelines you, you get given in foot champs. <laughs> I mean, right, you I'm specifically. Done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I knew that, Brian, I knew that was directed <laughs> yeah. to me. I didn't need it redirected to me again. No, it's been a, a one-sided game. It's been a fantastic performance from Fnatic Diogo and Tex. They've been the best team from the first minute and they've shown it and they could even get an eighth here. Here we go. Diogo stopped moving. Tex, Tex. Tex is going to score. With our nine, eight goals. They've just done it. They've matched the group stage goal tally. They got across eight games of FIFA. They've done it in the quarterfinal. Wowee. What a way to announce yourself back for 2023. Texan Diogo setting the mark, setting the pacemaker. Don't forget anyone will be able to keep up with them if they go like that. That was incredible, incredible performance from the Fnatic boys. Of course, commiserations to Anders and Umma. They've done incredibly well to get to this stage. Unbeaten, but it wasn't meant to be. And yeah, there's, it's, it's tough to go out in a competition when you feel like it's just been a blowout result. It's really hard to, to see. How does that happen? How? Yeah, I don't, I really don't know what to say. I'll be honest. I don't think anyone associated with RB Leipzig have much to say. You just, I don't, yeah, I really, I'm speechless in the way that that game turned out. It was very, very one-sided. A demolition job seen out by Diogo and Tex, and rightly so, they advance into the semi-finals up I, against Complexity. I just think, Ryan, we said we wanted this game on paper for so long. Oh, yeah. It's going to be this a crazy game where you're right, it would have been 6-5 or it would have been crazy. Yeah, that's what I thought. We but... didn't expect this. 8-1. Fnatic have just won a quarter-final. They've just won $25,000 as well. They've sent home, Amit, the current world champion, the Danish wonder kid, uh, Anders Vergang. They're out of the tournament, that's it, that's done. Forget building that story anymore. I think attention has to turn to those two boys on your screen. They Absolutely. always said that they are a great team. Yesterday, they are a little bit modest and maybe they're playing the game mentally, but what a performance, they're in the semi-finals. Absolutely, again, a huge congratulations to both Tex and Diogo. They advanced into the semi-finals. And if they can perform anything like that, I'll be honest, it's going to take a lot to beat them. Amazing stuff. Two quarterfinals down for now. It's down to Carl Walker, who's joined by a few guests. Brandon, thank you so much. We are joined by some guests, myself and Richard Buckley. Joxan Diogo. Diogo, we'll be coming to you in a few moments. We'll let you cool down after that performance. Joxan, Ryan Pessoa has just said it's going to take a lot to beat Fnatic. We've just seen their performance. How are you going to do it? Because this is the team you'll be facing on Wednesday. Yeah, honestly, they're a really good team. We saw the last game, they scored like 10 goals. Um, they're a good team, but, you know, we're, we're the world champions as well. So, I mean, we can do it. You've just said you're the world champions, and we all know that, but also, Maxi and yourself, you've been talking about the disrespect that you get as a pairing, as a group, and as an organisation as well. I mean, you're coming up in a semi-final against a team that we could say equally uh, as competitive, equally as good, obviously, within the FIFA scene as well, but you're the world champions. That confidence, you must take that forward. Yeah, honestly, like I said, like they're a really good team, and I know we know it's going to be like a really tight game, and it's going to come to the margins. So honestly, we got to prepare tomorrow and hope for the best on Wednesday. Do you think that they respect you, or do you think that they can do the exact same to you? Honestly, like I don't really care what they think. Like, yeah. Right. Well, Richard, let's get a, a response, a right to reply from Diogo there. Yeah, we'll get on to that. Uh, firstly, Diogo, that was supposed to be the Floyd Mayweather matchup. That was supposed to be the hardest game of the tournament. 
you made it look really easy. What's your just first thoughts? Like you came away beaming. How are you feeling? You yeah, almost have forgot, man. Like we're getting called the underdogs, and I'm, I'm with you. Know, like they had a really good group stage. We didn't, to be honest. Like we had a really subpar group stage. But this is knockout. Like knockout stages are different. Best of two, um, game by game. Honestly, Leipzig are like I still think they are top two teams. Um, but they are top two teams behind us, and today I think we we showed that. Uh, you've obviously seen the performance. You know who you're going to face in in the semi final. Um, what do you make? to complexity. Amendez never forgets, man. Amendez never forgets, that's what I'll say. Honestly, no. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna take this game with the same amount of like, respect and preparation as we took this game, just because everyone expected Leipzig to, be, um, to beat us, and maybe now we're the favorites against complexity on paper. It doesn't mean that you know, we're not gonna try as hard. Like. Amendez never forgets. Can we, is there a little bit on that? I seem to remember penalty shootout, potentially, a penalty kick. Can you, can you go on that? Yeah, yeah, I'd show, I'd show, just know, if we get, if we go to penalties, I will be penenka in every penalty down the middle. Every single penalty down the middle. Because Amendez never forgets. But we're getting back. Wow. Well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Let's fast forward to Wednesday. I cannot wait for this matchup. Complexity against Fnatic. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Congratulations to you both. As I said before, we, uh, we're about to get in the middle of these two, Richard. Congratulations. You've made it through to the semi-finals. Let's get your response and your thoughts. Rachel, Mike, wow. Fighting talk on this side of the arena. I can't last for words over here. I mean, I kind of mentioned it, didn't I? Nobody wanted to play Leipzig and I'm going to say especially Diogo I actually was chatting to him before the match I said how are you feeling he said anybody but this team but he said Rachel do I get to do a pre-match interview I said oh, I think you do he's like right cool I'm going to get in their head and that is exactly what they managed to do Mike Lavelle. This was all mental and when I spoke to both Tex and Diogo separately before everything got underway today I was like how does it kind of feel to be an underdog because usually when they go into competitions of course everybody's talking about Fnatic talking about their partnership and they're like underdogs oh is that how you feel and then you heard it when we came on they did that pre-match interview every one of them they were ha handling it where they were saying underdog 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 I think they got in their head and it, it showed I mean this was a dominant dominant matchup the most impressive 2v2 we've seen this far. Well they worked with that underdog performance title they they're not the underdogs. <laughs> they weren't the underdogs as they proved, but maybe they like to use that to their advantage, Mike, and it worked for them. It shows some experience there, and you just saw goal on goal on goal, and they could have slowed up. They didn't have to continue. They could have showed a little bit of mercy, had more possession play, but they just kept adding goal on top of goal. And I was so impressed with a lot of their build-up play. They, they, as you see Tex celebrating, he doesn't see him, he doesn't hear him. It's all mental again. Uh, between the skills, between the reading of the game, a lot of the possession play is so impressive, especially against two players that are known to be able to press really well. You would have never noticed that press. And yes, there's a consolation goal here, but it, it, it didn't mean anything. And it does kind of send RB Leipzig back home where they have to go back to the drawing board to a certain degree because there was such a separation in this matchup against Fnatic in, in RB Leipzig. You know, we talk about mentally, though, you think that Leipzig lost it. You're talking about a current world champion losing it mentally. But, but it's How? different playing 2v2s. You have to be as a collaboration there. You go down a few goals, things aren't clicking, what are you going to shift? What are you going to change? And I really feel like if you watch that back, you can see the emotions on their faces. There's not a lot of communication. And I think that was a, a big difference for RB Leipzig, not being able to get mentally back in the game. They weren't able to bring it together as a group. I mean, in text, he added fuel to the fire, didn't he, with the celebration there. Do you it's think a little showmanship? It's part it? of it. It's part. They might feel a certain type of way. They, they, they might. <laughs> so you see Tex bringing out a few celebrations here. Uh, to me, that looks like he doesn't see you. He doesn't hear you. They're in a different light, a different space. That's probably going to go out on social media quite a bit. I was going to say, if they didn't see it then, they will do a little bit later on this evening when they actually have a time to think about what happened tonight. They don't make it through to the final four on Wednesday. Mike, you have a highlight as well for us in the analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Where is this coming from? Which leg? Well, we're going to go to the first leg, and I actually think it's a big moment here. And the goal might not be as impressive in the first watch, but we talk about mentality, and this just shows you you're mentally in a different place. Place. You're going to see goalkeeper movement gone wrong. 
As you see the close up here, you've got R9. The goalkeeper is going to slightly be moved manually to try to cut off an angle of a pass, and he notices that. Uh, Tex and Diogo has this collab. They hit it on the near post. He kind of fumbles it into the, 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 the back of the net, but at the end of the day, it's again showing that I'm seeing the game quicker than you. I'm in your head. I'm reading everything that's happening, and it added a little more of that extra insult going into that second leg. It really sets the tone, sets the tempo. They didn't have to chase a game, and because their possession play and defending was so special in this matchup, they never felt the pressure from RB Leipzig. They were seeing the game, and they obviously are seeing Leipzig. They now have to go and see complexity before Wednesday because that's another matchup entirely there. Well, guys, we've seen two teams go through to Wednesday. We've still got four to see in action tonight. There we have it, complexity gaming. They'll now face Fnatic in semi-final number one. Next up, though, we have Atleti Riders up against Team Footwiz, who Rich is ever the resurgent team. But they are the club world champions, of course, the Riders. Riders. They're the ones I guess everyone will be worried about in this side of the draw. They're up against those two, Ethan and Nick Sneb. That's coming your way next. Cup is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Welcome back to the EA Sports Cup. We're halfway through our quarter-final stage, but believe me, do not go anywhere. We've got plenty more FIFA 23 action coming your way. And let's get to our next matchup. And what a matchup it will be. This next team gave us one of the most exciting games in the group stages. They'll be full of confidence coming into this one. The runners-up of Group B is Team Footwiz. Now, both of these will be coming in high on confidence, as I said, ready to take on the big stage here in London. Let's get a, a quick word with both of them. I mean, I've got to start with you, Nick Sneb, coming into this tough game. However, you guys, you're up to the challenge. Yeah, tough game indeed. Obviously, Club World Cup champions. We've, we know we take that in mind, but we play well in the groups. So I think there's a lot of improvement to be made, so hopefully we can show it today. And Ethan, very quickly, pressure on yourself considering the achievements you've had recently? Um, no, this is a different ball game. Of course, I'll be happy that FGS went, but this isn't the same. This is 2v2 now, and I'm here to focus on that and hopefully perform well. Well, good luck. I'm looking forward to it. Make your way over, get yourselves ready, and let's get into introducing their opponents. Wow, what a team this is. Maybe sporting a new name, but the same unstoppable drive to win. The winners of Group C, it's Atletico de Madrid, Movistar Riders. As I said, they will be coming into this one with a new name and some celebrations to match it as well. A quick word with the team right here. Atleti Riders coming up against their footwiz. They're confident. We can see that in them, but anything can happen, as we've seen in the last matchup. How have you prepared for this one? Yeah, we've prepared for a long way. We know Footwiz uh, is playing a really good FIFA. We know that everything can happen, so we prepared the best way to, to, to go to the game and get the win. Right, well, I'll let you get off and get yourselves ready. As I said, the timer now has started. The FIFA 23 action is on its way. Our third quarter final, finding out who's making their way to the semi-finals on Wednesday. Let's get to it. Thank you so much, Kyle. I'm joined by Ryan. I'm up top. Yep. I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but every time I've come up here, it's always a classic game. Give us a little bit of the overview with these two uh, teams facing off, because we have very different gameplay styles. Yep, absolutely. We saw with Footwiz in the group stage, they like to score a lot of goals. They, of course, were probably involved in 
the most entertaining game we've seen where there were four goals up and gave it away. Riders, of course, topping the group, um, the same group as Fnatic, who we just seen demolish um, mm -hmm. RB Leipzig. So you can see how incredible they are. But again, anything can happen. And they're the current reigning champions. Yeah, exactly, and with yeah. that being said, we should take a look at what they've accomplished as a team. We've seen Andoni and yep. we've seen Tuga in action time and time again. Yep. And it's the Movistar Riders from Spain, a Portuguese and a Spanish player. Until they find R9. Lovely roulette! Even better finish! Mbappe's in no man's land. He can make it too. Movistar Riders will make their best ever outing in a FIFA E Club World Cup. Will he make it too? Yes, he will! Avoid. Avoid. I I'll say Movistar. I'll say Riders. Anti football. Anti football, yeah. Mbappe! Fielding again into our nine. Will we start riders on a play, Marcelo? It can be boring, but we are the best, so come and get us. I don't even think they're boring like that at all. I don't think that's fair. I don't like that statement. All these guys do is win. They're the most organized team. It's got to be they said. They are. They are. I agree. I actually think they are the most organized team. Not just in twos, in 1v1s as well. Tuga and Andoni are fantastic players. They've been so consistent over the years, reaching multiple World Cup finals. So, again, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. And we've seen that. They're the reigning 2v2 champions. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking, we've seen what they have to offer. We, I know Footwiz is going to score goals. They're going to go forward. They're very yeah. offensive. And let's take a little look at how they got here, why we're building up Footwiz the way that we are. How can you ignore Footwiz? You're making a lot of noise right now. One, they're young. Two, they're very confident. And three, they just seem to know how each other play FIFA. What a start. Cancelo through the legs of the defender. Chance name, I want to play, David Sanchez! Just like that, we're all square at 2-2. I'm looking forward to playing Leipzig now. That's three draws for Footwiz, and that's kind of the takeaway. Ethan and Nick Snep. You see the new Footwiz kits? Corner kick, expect this to go direct. Whips it in, Rude hold it back, post, green, time, finish. I talked to him Face. before the day. They were saying that they feel good with the corners. You see it on display, two for two, two nil. Cruyff, love it. Is it there? Hey, oh, that is something spectacular. Yeah, it's almost like a, a relief because I've always bad to be one of the better 2v2 players. Back in January, we'll take on Riders uh, in the quarter final. How are you feeling about that one? Yeah, they're very good 2v2 and they've, they've shown that. So, yeah, it'll be a good game. Wow, wow, wow. So, coming into this, we've got. I would say two that are, are building their path of being legends in the FIFA scene. We're yep. looking at Tuga and Andoni. Then you have the, kind of the new kids on the block that are having success individually yep. and also as a collective with Nick Sneb and Ethan. Walk us through this. Build it up a little bit because I already think there's going to be a lot of goals in this game. I think it's going to be different than what we normally see when we have Tuga and Andoni in action. Yep, absolutely. The they're two players I know really well um, in both Ethan and Nick Sneb. They're fantastic going forward. You see the amount of goals they scored. Deadly from set pieces as well. And of course, coming into this, Ethan mentioned it. He is the current FGS1 champion, which happened, I believe, a week or so ago. So again, he's coming in with a huge amount of confidence and I believe they deserve it as well. They're a team to be reckoned with and I think they're going to show that, as Ethan said, they believe they're amongst the two or the top 2v2 teams. And I think they'll show it today. And I think a big key for Footwiz coming into this is getting the early goal or not conceding that first goal. Yeah. Just because it doesn't allow Tuga, it doesn't allow Andoni to sit back and play from a comfortable position. Yeah, and of course, you don't want to allow them, of course, giving up a 1-0 lead against some um, a team like Atleti Riders, you don't want to allow them to set the tempo of the game because it falls into their hands. They're happy to keep possession, whether they're 1-0 up or 0-0. It's just about being composed and not dragging defenders out of place. You see Jarzinho here down the wings. That's going to be a common theme. Looking for the entry pass to Mbappe. Not quite. Big mistake out of the back. Mbappe working. A couple skill moves. Good defense there from Hernandez. And something that you're going to see from riders that not every team's doing, as we see our first corner kick as well, is they play three at the back. Yeah, the 3-4-2-1. It is incredibly hard to defend against. When they build up slowly, they get the, the overloads on the, the right or left side of the pitch. And there's going to be a corner whipped in here. Surely you're trying to isolate the likes of Rude Hullet, if possible. I think this is direct. I could be wrong. There it is with Rude Hullet. Kind of a ugly flick on. He kind of wins the header. Maybe it deflects off of him. It wasn't that clean of a connection. 
And that's probably the best case scenario. Ball goes out and you get a reset. Something that I find with playing a lot of FIFA is one corner kick turns into two, turns into three, turns yeah. into four, where I yeah. can't get myself out. I can't yeah. get out of that situation. And this year, in my opinion, probably the most effective it has been to score directly from a corner. Well, score from a corner. I don't necessarily mean directly in straight past the line, but there's so many options where you could play it short, you can whip it back post, you could drill it into the, towards the penalty spot. And of course, I mentioned you can just take it directly and, and it could result in a chance, which more often than not results in goals. We even spoke off camera how many goals we anticipate from corners. And again, these two are... Give them the numbers. If you're going to say I, that, give them the numbers. I, I gave seven. <laughs> and right. I said 10. I don't know if I'm being <laughs> yeah. overly... I think we're up to four already, though, to be fair, at the halfway point. Yeah, so there's been a, a few opportunities from corners. So it remains to be seen if um, Fuiz can continue from their succession in the group stages with set pieces, as we see Nick Sneb. Mbappe looking for space. Root hole is a great feed to Ronaldo. Looking for a turn, really wasn't able to deal with Cafu. And on the buildup from Atleti, you're going to see much slower out of the back and just trying to utilize those wings because yeah. they have those extended overlapping runs with the additional wingers. Absolutely. They're just going to play it slowly. As I said, they're going to play for the overloads in attack. Of course, you've got the right midfielder linking up with the right forward. So again, it creates that overload. It allows them to, to potentially um, force Footwiz to pull a defender out of position to try and cover the extra man. Um, that's pushed forward from the, the sides of the pitch. And I was just going to ask you, I struggle a lot against this formation. What's the best way to counteract when somebody's playing the 3-4-1-2 or even the 3-4-2-1? Yeah, we've struggled with this ourselves. It, it's sort of potentially matching it if you're comfortable enough to do that. And of course, it's pretty similar because I believe Footways will be using the 4-3-2-1, the which um, has had a lot of success. We saw it in the 1v1 with um, the 1v1 tournament with Footways Ethan winning that using the 4-3-2-1. Sees Zidane here looking in the midfield. Has become a staple player, mainly because he offers you some of the defensive chase back, but the offensive capabilities. Maybe doing a little bit too much extra. There was a root hole. There was nothing open. Trying to get your timing and alignment lined up. And the reason we make a big deal of this three at the back, basically with those extra wingers, somebody's always open. Yeah. Yeah. Look now, as you can see, they've got sort of a five spread across the front line. You see potentially a... Ooh, I was going to say a back post cross there. It was good goalkeeper movement. LA's working. Space. Ooh! Almost takes it off him nearly with the ball roll scoop turn. I, I was just going to count, uh, <laughs> speak on what you saw. The cross was open there with yeah. Captain Villa. Right player, right time. Could have whipped it in. A lot of space to work with here, though. Counter attack. I don't know if I love the recycle. They had a little bit of momentum uh, when, when looking at Footwiz. And it's very difficult to build up and beat the likes of Indoni and Tuga. Again, we talk about their organization, but that's because we mean it. These guys the have had so run. much success. There was a triggered run there from Villa. Yeah, it was offside in the end, and it was a, it was a great offside trap from, I believe it would have been Tuga there. Another recycle here from Cafu. And again, your entry ball here is always going to be through the wings. They're always looking to switch the pitch yeah. because you have that extra player. You send them on the moves. Even if it draws a defender out of position, that's still beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's very hard to defend against. But again, it's sort of a formation where you sort of have to build up slowly, so you're not really going to be too susceptible to counterattacks. Oh, sorry, you're, gonna, you're not going to be looking towards counterattacks a lot, but you are going to be susceptible to counterattacks just because your right midfielder and left midfielder are bombing forward and are so high up the pitch. And that's why I was a little bit disappointed. Footwiz had that one yeah, break, and you have, to, yeah. you have to go for it. You have to be a little more direct. You even see R9 there chasing back on the wings because they really can't deal with it. Nobody's there. Yeah, you want to pull someone back in just to, to help with the overload on... The sides of the pitch, but it's going to be a free kick. Not in shooting range, but it looks as if they're going to potentially lay it short here. I've got Lucio. Big switch. Goalkeeper. Easy for Van der Sar. Another recycle. And again, in these types of circumstances, you can't even counterattack. So if you're not able to get the ball off of riders, it puts it where you almost have to play their game, where it's going to yeah. be a lot more of that traditional build-up play to try to get that, that extra middle pass or even finding some space on the wings. I think as well, we can see, we associate Footways with, I wouldn't say gung-ho FIFA, where they push a lot of bodies forward, but they seem to create a lot of chances. They haven't done so far. Could this be the moment? Got options. Zidane with the step over. A lot of step overs, a lot of ball rolls. We'd love to see that. The swing is open. R9 back to Zidane. A little bit of a cancellation there. Goes for the speed boost that you can receive from those step overs. Almost gives you a half second of shielding the ball. And you do have that counter press, but it's got to be said, Atleti does a fantastic job of controlling it. Yeah, they really do. That was a great bit of dribbling there as well from Nick Sneb. My opinion, one of the best dribblers that we have in the FIFA scene. He's incredible going forward. 
And I think Ethan and Nick have complement each other very well. I think, as I mentioned, Jacob going forward, I think Ethan is very disciplined and he's sort of the mature player out of the two of them where if they are, I'm about to say, if they are leading, he's going to be the person that, to say, let's slow it down a little bit. But they were leading. We've seen them give up leads. So I, hopefully anyway, for their sake, they would have sort of ironed out those flaws defensively, which it seems as if they have done. They seem a lot more structured today than we have seen as we see the run as well from Yaya. This could be in. Rude Hullet, can he do this quickly? Not a lot of time for the recycle here. Coming up to halftime. There's the big switch. Jarzinho looking for Mbappe. Doesn't find him. Yaya Torre outside of the boot. Safe hands for Vandasar, and that should take us to half. Not a half of a lot of opportunities. Maybe I'm a little bit disappointed with my own. Yeah, that's been nothing. Anticipation. <laughs> yeah. I built it up a little bit. I say I come upstairs. I see goals happen. But yeah, that, if anything, you walk away with two and Don't you have to say that was a good half? Yeah, there hasn't been anything at all. I'll be honest. This has been the the more laid back set of games that we we have seen so far um, throughout the quarterfinals today. But again. <sighs> It's still all to play for, irrespective of the, the current scoreline. It just seems as if neither team are creating anything going forward. They're just sort of recycling a lot. Rather than penetrating the area, they're sort of happy to, to go back. But as I was mentioning, I think footwiz don't usually play like that. But you're forced to play like that because of the way Atleti Riders play. You're kind of scared to give possession away. Well, I was going to say, it's because of respect. Yeah, if yeah. you're going up against somebody else, maybe it'd be a different story. You yeah, adjust absolutely. your tactics, you go for it, you have more of a counter press. But because it's the likes of Tuga, it's the likes of Indoni, you say to yourself, all right, maybe I'm going to sit this out and see if we can break through, see if we can find a little bit of that additional space or that one counterattack. And that's why we stress the importance of that first goal. Yeah, absolutely. As we're back into the action here, Footwiz this time, starting with possession. We see the likes of Virgil van Dijk being included on almost all the squads. I think that he's kind of came to fruition as being a must-have or a staple center back. Yeah, definitely. And a, a few acquisitions as well in the side we see Ronaldinho as well being used. Jairzinho, somebody that sort of surprised me, but he's, again, we saw with Fnatic how useful he was um, on the wings with their build-up play in the 4-2-3-1. It was um, very effective with his skill moves and dribbling. Speaking of Ronaldinho, though, with Team Footways building up here. Fake shot cancellation again. Bodies are coming. Zidane cancels out of the locker. This is good work from R9. Needs something special. I was hoping for maybe Ooh. Elastico there. Something to just disrupt. This is the first corner that Footways have got this game. I spoke about how effective they are from corners. We've said they're the best at corners. Oh, a little bit too much there. And it, it reminds me, I'm still having nightmares for Guild when they were going up yeah, against Nicholas exactly. and company. I remember that game. And it was <laughs> yes. goal on goal on goal when it came to some of those corner kicks. And, and they're unstoppable. We place them right. This year in particular, you just have a lot more options with some of the customization. Yeah. And, and we're seeing it used and abused so well from corners. Mbappe into space. Can he find help? Beautiful step overs. S still has it. Looking for the extra pass. I think we're going to have a corner kick as well. It's a goal kick. Yeah. Oh! Great defending there from well um, Jacob, from Nick Sneb. Otherwise known as Jacob. Just sort of jockeying backwards, not diving into a challenge to potentially give away a penalty or force your or force your hand and basically make the decision for the attacker. He just waited, bided his time, and done enough there to, to see the ball out. And I don't know about you, but the FIFA fan in me just wants to see Footwiz kind of go for it. I don't know if it's in their best interest. I'm not the coach, <laughs> but I'd love to watch yeah. it. Giving away possession there, though, as well. Rude Hullet looking for options. They've got space to work with. Got to be careful with Mbappe. Jarzinho attacking that space. Going to be another recycle. And this is just right up the alley of Tuga and Andoni 101. And you're going to see Andoni often be more of the crater in yeah. terms of some of those key areas with some of the skills. But as an organized duo, as you actually see a little bit of a rare mistake here, but I think Footwiz has to go quicker. Every time they have these slow build-up plays, I don't think it plays to their strengths. They're very good with some of the free flow. They're very fluid. You see Dino there linking into space. And a big reason that I feel that Ronaldinho's become another staple in teams is because of his body type, his yep. movement, his animations. Yeah. If you remember when he was a cover star, he had all that motion capture yep. goodness. The, the and he just does yeah. things different. Absolutely. The animations, of course, are a key factor in the selection, of course. Not to mention he does have the, the pace, the shooting, the dribbling, the five-star skills. He's sort of a, a perfect winger on this game. And when you're able to choose any player... Oh, looking for outside of the box. I, I wish they would have had another... Maybe pass there, Jarzinho, to Root Hullet. They're probing. Yaya Torre. It's a good splitting pass. They got the overlapping run. Hesitation. Ooh, it's, it's got to be a penalty. 
Ah, it's a lazy challenge there. It is always. Oh, I'm not sure who that it's was. It's got to be a pen, though. It, is a, be it a is a penalty for sure. Is Ethan going to save it here? Oh, he, does he is! Down the middle. Keep oh, Van der Sar again. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. And you see some of those mind games. We bring it up. We talk about it yeah. time and time again. He shifted all the way to the left side of the goal, scoots back to the inside, sits tight. This might be that little bit of momentum I, that they I need. I was just about to say that. I think this could be the wake-up call. This could be the wake-up call to tell them, all right, we need to kick into gear now because we've given away a chance there that has led to a penalty. It was a rash challenge there. We've saved it. We've given ourselves a, a lifeline to not go down by one. As you mentioned, you don't want to go down by any sort of lead against Atleti Riders. Jarzinho, a little bit sloppy there with the fake shot. I don't love that. Uh, if you're looking at measuring frames of when you're doing some of the skill moves, he left that wide open. Had a chance, I think, with R9. Could have played a little bit of a 1-2 game there. Virgil back to Zidane. A lot of splitting space here. You see the running fake shot. Still looking for options. Those options have disappeared. Might have another recycle. There it is, Ronaldinho. Hernandez. Love Hernandez this year. Can you do something on the end line? Here we go, R9. Big switch. Root hole trying to find space. Can't find space. Surely it's going to go out wide. Would love to see some crossing from Footwiz as well. Yeah, that's uh, something that they usually do, but I, they haven't really found the chances because the back three sort of set up to mark the back post cross. It's very hard to break down the 3 4 2 1. You can see the way they're defending. Every person, they're dragging the strikers back or the one striker back to, to help defend, and there's no gaps at all. Well, let so. me ask you this. When you're, you're going up against an opposition that's sitting so many bodies, do you sometimes take long shots or maybe even whip in some of those crosses just as uh, to let them know it's possible? Yeah. That, 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 that it could happen. Or of you're course. looking for those second options, maybe the bounce backs. Yeah, you kind of have to look for the opportunity to, to take it when it comes, whether that's a long shot. We've seen um, Ethan score long shots in the previous weeks in the group stages where if you green time it, whether it's a Traveller or a finesse shot or a, sh a shot across goal, you, of course, give yourself a higher likelihood to find the back of the net. But... With the way it's been set up, I don't think there's been too many angles in this game where it's been an opportunity for them to take. I think Atleti Riders have set up really well. Of course, nil nil. We always say it's a it's a boring scoreline when it comes to FIFA, but it's something that it's just so hard to break down the way that they have it set up. Well, it's also a tactical masterclass. That's something yeah. we should really bring yeah. up and credit the likes of Tugan and Doni. The way that they are able to adjust or force oppositions to play the way they wish they. That they want them to play is, is a skill in itself. And you yeah. see all the communication there as well with these changes. You should see substitutions here uh, as you're going to have some of the additional speed. I'm assuming that footwoods will go short, but you never know. They've had some different set piece situations kind of in the locker. Yeah, this is. I just missed how far out this was. This could be a strike here, you know. <gasps> oh, I've got enough power behind it there. I was going to say, the way it lined up and the angle for the, the outside of the shot, we've seen it with three kicks this year again. And something that has, all, um, that has changed from previous years is the, the setup from three kicks as well as corners. And it's, it's something that when the opportunity arises, even for me, I think that's slightly too far out, maybe a little bit too optimistic, but you sort of have to test your luck. I always wonder if there's maybe a little bit of a game of trying to guess if the goalkeeper's going to move as well. Yeah. Because we yeah. saw that happen in the previous matchup. It obviously went for Fnatic with Tex and Diogo. But some of that is slightly a guess. Of course. Yaya, Rude Hull, a good step Rude. from the yeah. reverse Yaya. And this is where I'm saying they got to go. The bodies just aren't moving for them. Yeah, it's going to be no another one. slow buildup. I was going to say, of course, we criticized them for not going for it, but they, there wasn't re really many runs. Maybe they didn't trigger a lot of runs here. It's that Alfonso Davies. Here we go. A lot of space to work with. Maybe a little bit ambitious there to try to break through the midfield with the uh, the step over. We'll call this a veteran foul on a reset. The fact that they've called the free kick as well just shows they know that it's, what, 86 minutes or 85 minutes in almost. They're just going to play for last attack, <laughs> I'll be honest. They're happy to do that. And, of course, you don't blame them, but it's very hard to... This is what I'm saying, right? When you play against possession teams or possession players, you sort of build up in your head that if you give away possession and you concede, it's going to be even harder to get back into it. But just one lapse of concentration to go 1-0 down and you are chasing the game for the, the, the remainder. So it's very hard to, to, I guess, prepare yourself mentally for these type of games. But they would have had a long time to do so. They would have known their opponent for a, a few weeks now so they would know that who they're coming up against. There's plenty of footage out there for both these teams. Uh-oh, space was opening up. We do have a corner kick here in the 90th minute. I feel that we can all relate to this, perhaps, in foot champs. <laughs> Surely they're not taking it with Rude Hullet. You can see that change. 
You want to have him in the box, giving you a chance to challenge for something. So you're looking at Rude Hullet as again as a potential target. You got Virgil Van Dyke in there, of course, as well. Their first attempt was a almost a knockdown at the near post. Yeah, it looks as if this is gonna be something different. Maybe it's just behind the penalty spot, I think he's looking towards. And the keeper potentially could have caught it, but it does enough to, to get it out there. There's still time though for riders to, to push forward. We've got a minute left of added time in the first leg. Oh, didn't even get another opportunity. <laughs> didn't get the chance. Probably not the best end of um, best end to the game, but Mike, nil nil. It was we passive. Have, it was yeah, passive, we Ryan. Had, we gotta say. You spoke up about coming. I in jinxed to us, yeah, I'm you sorry. Jinxed it heavily I'm sorry. because we've got a, a snooze fest mm. right now, I'll be honest. There's not much going at all, but again, you have to stay disciplined. You have to keep focus. Keep focused for um, Team Footwiz to make sure they don't give up too many mistakes. The only glaring chance was, of course, that penalty that was missed or was saved, I should say. That's really it. That's been the moment of the match. Yep. Other than that, it was so much in the midfield. And then it was a matter of who was going to go for it. We didn't see, like I said, those counter presses that I was hoping for or some of the double teams and, and so forth and so on. Um, but the players are going to reset. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the second leg where we have to have a decider. There has to be a winner. So, yeah, we look forward to the second leg. back in action we've got the second leg before we get into that if you missed the first leg we've got some highlights yep i'm not gonna front there weren't that many opportunities <laughs> okay well, let's walk you through yeah. what happened how it happened when it happened you say highlights i'll be honest <laughs> i'm trying to maybe a switch of play might be featured in here but this was a great challenge there from ethan with the the pre-anticipated challenge with van dyke the cross whip tin and we've seen this is this is part of the highlight right here we've, it was a good idea it was a good idea the cross <laughs> jazinho build up play from atleti riders this was a shot at the end of the first half to Trevella that didn't lead to the goal. But this was the moment, the penalty there. It was a lazy challenge from Team Footways, but it was a fantastic read and a great save there down the middle of the goal. Do you go down the middle for penalties? I, I don't know. I never do. I like to pick a corner. Yeah. Don't give out your tactics right now. Yeah, if anybody yeah. should get a shout out, it's Vandersar. Yeah, he's been he's making stops. He's getting out there for the crosses. Go, he blocks the penalty kick and he skips back up off his line. Nobody yeah. protected him. Yeah, yeah, he, he done said, enough. I got he this. done enough. He done he enough. He covered like 12 yards. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hope though that the, the highlights package features some goals, which it, it has it to. It has to. It has to in the second leg. So, yeah, there's been genuinely, other than the scoreline, obviously nothing to separate them. But who would you say this favors? I don't really know. I don't think. I really have no idea. I don't like sitting on a fence. I would have said a fast-paced game that was open, had the free flow fluidity, would be beneficial for yeah. Footwiz. Uh, a slower game, typically, because we've seen time and time again, when we're looking at athletic riders, these guys grind out results. Yeah. I think they're the best 2v2 duo, and with Tuga in particular, maybe the best 1v1 player, period, at grinding out results. You may maybe a case or an argument for Nicholas in there as well. Yeah. But they win so many games that seem like 50-50s, oh, but they're not. 100%, I agree. Space to work with in an early pass. Big opportunity missed there just from kickoff. He finally got the ball into that dangerous area. We talk about it all the time, but if you can get kind of on the edge in between the, the semicircle and, and the edge of the box, that's a great place to attack. Yeah. Whether it's body feints, step over, scoop turns, ball rolls, fake shots, something. That was sort of the, the footways that we've, we've seen throughout the competition so far. Attacking quickly, playing quick passes. Again, it wasn't meant to be that time, but it's more, more of the same will sort of lead to them having potentially more chances. This is the, the overload I was talking about there. You see the left back 
um, or the left midfielder, sorry, pushing up onwards, supporting the left forward. And it's very hard to mark because the, your players, when you're defending it, they don't track the run. So you have to manually bring a player back in there to support your defensive structure. Otherwise, you're going to be overloaded on the sides of the pitch. I actually wouldn't mind if we had that sequence to kind of break down on some of the defensive movement there because they yeah. baited the long shots, but moved the yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of simultaneous movement happening in order to make that play that looks somewhat simple or somewhat rudimentary. It wasn't that at all. Not at all. Cafu from the back, big Virgil. Again, you're going to see Atleti riders take their time as much as possible. And then again, the key is going to be these overlapping wing wingers or wing backs or outside midfielders, however you want to categorize these types of players and their role on the pitch. They kind of do all of the above. Yeah. See the building up here with Team Footwiz is Ethan and Nick Sneb. It's just been too slow. Yeah, it's just too slow. I think they've even changed formation maybe to, to offer something different here in this second leg because, as we said, the, look at the structure. They bring back their striker. Look how deep R9 Ronaldo is. It is. Oh, that's a good pass. Mbappe outside of the boot. Goalkeeper's going to have that clear, but we're seeing a little bit more aggressive. You've got to push some bodies into the dangerous areas. And what foot makes Footwiz special, and this might be a big statement, but I would argue they might be the best attacking duo that we have in the competition. Yeah. Even after the Fnatic game we just saw, even after some of the previous RB Leipzig results, these guys go forward and there's something about how they attack where there's usually no fear. Yeah. This game's had a lot more hesitation. Way more hesitation than they're usually accustomed to. I spoke about how Nick Sneb is very effective in and around the area, but they just haven't even got there. Or when they have got there, they've recycled it. And it's another corner. That, that was all about drawing that corner yeah, kick that, there. I think that's the aim here. <laughs> Atleti Riders are, are happy if they can get a goal up here, and whether it's from a corner or, or a lucky goal, whichever it may be. But as long as it gives them that goal, they'll be completely content and just seeing out that one goal game. Yeah, Rude hole at the near post. Seen a couple dun dummy runs go back from R9. Here. Back post matchup. It's a strange header. Not your perfect animation. Van der Sar to the rescue again. And if you're feeling nervous, when that happens in-game, anything can come afterward yeah, of course. in FIFA. We've all experienced it. Dino again with the outlet. See, right here, I don't like that recycle. You had bodies to go forward with, and this is just not what we've seen from them uh, in terms of being a little more aggressive, a little more decisive with that attack. Yeah, they're, of course, they're lacking the, the other centimeter. They triggered the run there, but we feel it wasn't there to support the pass inside because they triggered Van Dijk and of course he covered the position. Got Pele here. A little bit of pressure, but not that much. That's another critique I might add into Footwiz's game. We really haven't seen them with any counter presses. Not a lot of double teams. They've allowed uh, Atleti Riders to have the ball for the initial buildup. There we go, Captain Villa. They've triggered the run here. See, if you got a takeaway here, you could make that counter attack. Yeah, it's good. It's a good step there from Team Football. It's good pressure on the ball just to negate the chance for the German cross, we call it, where you trigger the run from the midfielder or defender and whip it in. But as I mentioned, you see how they're tracking back with Mbappe. They have to in order to help with the overload. But that sort of, it, it works against them because, look, he's not there now. So it's kind of hard to, to counter attack. Oh, breaks through. R9, being R9, what are you going to do with it for the finish? Oh. Goalkeeper is, is moved backwards, actually. So he doesn't really yeah. scoot to the left, doesn't scoot to the right. I think if it's a green time finish, it it's, might yeah. challenge him. You might be able to beat him up top, but otherwise, he, he, the goalkeeper's in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's a, it's a chance. Of course, we saw a goal goal in very similarly in the, the Fnatic RB Leipzig game. I think it was a goal to make it 3-0 for Fnatic, where it was a shot in at the near post from a, a similar angle. Keeper pushed it into the goal, but... It just wasn't meant to be that time. The goalkeeper move was a little bit different in that game, though. They were scooting yeah, yeah, them yeah. over. One, this yeah. was bringing them back. This big opportunity from Footwiz. They finally got a breakthrough. A little bit of good fortune there. But once R9 gets through, a lot of time to work with. Maybe these, too much time. These are the chances now that they have to push forward. All right. We've seen a missed tackle there. Rare mistake. I, I don't love bringing that back. you got to go forward while you have bodies. Here we go with Ronaldinho. A little bit of a fake shot, attacking the end lines is a great work. There we go. This is Nick Extra Snip. pass. That's Nick There's Snip. the That's goal. What I'm talking wow. About. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Fantastic dribbling there in the area. And it's an easy finish. Phenomenal timing. Yep. 
You, you see what Ronaldinho brings to the table again with those animations. We saw the body faint. We saw the face shot. We had that extra step, a little bit of a hesitation. And then finally the ball roll with the layoff. You can't miss from there. Yeah, those are the, that, those are the situations where we're speaking of. When you, you drive into the box, you force your opponent to make a decision. Is he going to step off? Is he going to jump in for the tackle? They've done a bit of both there, and neither of it worked. It was a fantastic bit of dribbling there and the easy pass for the easy finish. A lot of space for Jarzinho. He's going for the outside of the boot. I think it was going to be a cross, actually. They had Pele kind of trailing in. Again, we've seen them aim for R9 and Rude hold it almost as dummy runs in some of these examples. We aim for the back post, then for Virgil van Dijk. It is a bit of a mind game with these corner kicks. Yeah, it is. Because, again, you have to watch for the short here, which they're not really doing well. They're allowing the DAI to make the run out there. But the main priority is just watching the back post as it's whipped in here. And it's enough to be headed out. Could there be a, a slight counter? I think it should be... A, 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 well, resorting to game management here, just not pushing forward. They know that they're 1-0 up now. So a bit of a, a taste of Aleti Riders own medicine in terms of just keeping possession, not rushing forward and not giving it away in, in areas where if they do potentially give away possession like here, it's not enough time for a, a counter-attack. And they go in 1-0 up in at half time. And I'm going to it is deserved, but there's not really, other than that, there hasn't been anything. Well, I was going to say, they, they made the one mistake. We saw a big mistake. But I heard downstairs that I, I think Kyle might be down with foot with Dan. Maybe we'll get some insider track of what the, the halftime report's looking like. I am indeed, Mike. Thank you. Yes, foot with Dan looking on as his team score. I was preparing my question thinking, what am I going to speak to you about? And then foot with score, huge 45 minutes to come. Uh, it was great timing. Um, I mean, obviously, we knew the first first game was going to be very cagey. Um, Riders are a great team defensively. They set up really well at the back. So um, it's a great time to get the goal. Now we've just got to keep them out for 45 minutes and uh, hope the boys can do the business. On a scale of 1 to 10, how nervous are you? Because it's great being inside there. You know, you've got your coach in there, you've got the players, but you're on the outside and you're the one that has to watch and doesn't really have a say at this point. Uh, I don't think it's too bad at all. You know, the boys are in really good form, carrying a lot of momentum into this. So uh, I back them to, to get the job done. And demon has been brilliant with them. He has indeed. Right, let's see what happens. Big 45 minutes to go for both teams. Mike, back to you. And this is going to be a completely different 45 because we yeah. haven't seen any of the two Gandoni press. And again, uh, this might be long thought. It might be in the past, but we have seen Footwiz struggle to close out games. Of course, yeah. Uh, is he? Yeah, it's very easy to mention that. Of course, you've got a lot of Footwiz down there giving his, um, his credit to his, his players. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, this is objectively speaking, I was here. I've seen them, yeah, unfortunately, not be able to close out a few games. Yeah, it's very easy to... It, it's hard, though, with people because they've had situations where they have. But again, the moments that they, they gave it away have been headlining moments where the 4-0 one is sort of unforgivable. But again, you're in a position now where just die the clock down against Atleti Riders because they're going to have to go forward and it's sort of out of their comfort zone, in essence. They're always used to taking the lead. I'll tell you right now, this is not going to end 1-0. I'd, I'd be, be more shocked goals. if it ends There's going to be more yeah, goals be on display. I, that's why I kept stressing the importance of that opener. Now we have it. You can see the gamble, the press, the double teams, the risk that's being asserted by Atleti Riders to get that ball back. You said that we never usually see them in, in, a, in a position where they are the ones that are 1-0 down. They always are the team that they take the 1-0 lead. They're happy to see it out. They force the opponents to pull defenders out, to go a constant press, so there's more gaps to, to capitalize on. But now they're, they're in the position where they're 1-0 down. Great play here. Great defending as well from, from Ethan and Nick Snebby. It's been fantastic defensively. And again, a great bit of defending there from Atleti, Atleti Riders as well. Yeah, the entry pass was top tier. Unfortunately, it was to Cap Devia. Didn't have the same creativity. Uh, to attack within the box, or right on the edge of the box. Pele looking for space, maybe drawing another corner kick. Indeed, he's drawing another corner kick. And I'm not here, it'd be the curse of the commentator, but at a certain corner kick count, I just expect one to go in. Yeah, I think they're up to like five now within these two different uh, legs. And to me, that says, okay, they're yeah. knocking on the door. Something has to bounce for them. Of course, there's, a, there's always a chance when you do have a corner. We know how good Tuga and, and Doni are. They're incredible players. They've been in positions where... The going is getting slightly tough and they need to get a goal. And as we said, they have the experience, they have the know-how, they have the trophies and success behind them. And they'll be hoping that can help push them on, give them a boost of confidence because there's still a little way to go in this game. And having a corner in FIFA 23 is always a great way to, to try and get back into it. 
Yeah, you see a lot of conversation between both teams here. Uh, and it's going to be a matter of what the last 15, 20 minutes are going to look like. Because at some point, once you turn on that press, the entire game, it does not, know, it does not matter what you've done previously, it shifts completely. Yeah, absolutely. From, from the rhythm, uh, the, the atmosphere, the pressure, it, players are on you instantane instantaneously. Yeah, it's going to be a, a difficult one because, of course, having a coach behind you, you need to sort of pick the right moments to give feedback. But this is the corner here from Andoni and Tuga. Can they get the goal back in this game? It's more of the same. Working Rude hold it at the, the front Ooh. post. Oh! oh, it's a great header. Fantastic save from Van der Sar. We've and, seen a number of those as well. And it's got to be said, this Rude hold it procedure is really to pull players out of position. He's been used more as a dummy. Yeah. Uh, they've been either looking to go short or that back post to Virgil. There's Virgil again. I don't know how this has stayed out of it. <laughs> it's very, this, this is what I'm talking about. You can't this. get yeah. out of it. You can't get away <laughs> yeah. from the corners. We genuinely spoke about this, but can it... Tuga and Andoni for Atleti Riders capitalize on multiple corners in a row now. This will be number three in quick succession. They need to make them count here. You can feel the tension in the room. Ooh, I think that's... D Davies with the delivery almost goes direct, but again, fourth corner consecutively. Corner number four. How many in a, in a row <laughs> can we get here before one finds the back of the net? We've already had two great saves from Van der Sar. It's a great corner, and it's a great goal. That's a huge goal for Riders. Atleti Riders, two and don't. We said, how many more corners could there be before it hit the back of the net? It was coming. I didn't mean it, Ryan, but curse of the commentator is right again. And you're going to have that instant pause. We're going to have more changes, more shifts, maybe some early substitutions going into the 60th minute. Uh, but the opportunities, it almost looked as if Tugan and Doni had figured out the corner kick procedure. To be fair, that's probably their fourth or fifth attempt. Yeah. Where they started putting them on frame. They just tried different options, of course, for, for Ethan and Nick. They had to sort of just think about which option is going to happen. It's very harsh, though. Corners, that's why I say corners are so harsh this year because you could defend it perfectly fine and still concede. And I just feel like it favors the attack. It's very difficult to concede. But again, you have to take those chances as they come. And it's 1-1. One, one. one goal apiece for both Team Footwiz and Atleti Riders. We've still, what, around half an hour left to play, plus potentially added time or extra time. Now, all of those tactical variations that you would have changed in-game, completely out the window. But let me ask you something. What happens here? You're playing in this matchup, Ryan. You're, you're Team Footwiz or you're, you're uh, Atleti Riders. What are you doing? Are you going for it? Are you sitting back? Because if, if you look at Tugan and Doni, they're very precise with picking their moments. And something we've said the whole time through is that Footwiz really hasn't looked like Footwiz. Yeah, they haven't played the, their scintillating attacking football today. But again, I think they would have had a, a game plan set out there to, to sort of negate the chances that Atleti Riders could create. You're from sitting on from the overloads. fence so well no, right no, now. No, no, but I feel as if they've sort of had a game plan where they don't want to give up an easy chance and end up going one or two nil down to Atleti Riders because once you do that, it's sort of mission impossible to come back into it. And they've seen here, they've scored a goal to take the lead, a great goal, oh. and ended up conceding from a corner. So again, it's something that, maybe that's, that's something that um, they've worked on with Denman. And when you're looking at Atletic Riders, they don't look to speed up their attack. It would only be on the defensive and, and game, or defensive and even if they're chasing a game, they're really not trying to, to go forward that much quicker. A lot of space to work with here. Can they find help? Might be looking to draw another corner kick. Good penetrating pass. And Bappe with the step overs brings Great it challenge. back. Big tackle. Needed to have that tackle. And you see a little more of that counter press as well with yeah. uh, Atleti Riders. Maybe the irony here is I think they look a little more aggressive than yeah, Footwiz exactly, yeah. with how they're pushing the game and pushing the tempo. The shark smells blood. But for which team? This is it. This is the moment. Now, the last 20 minutes of the game. Can Team Footways push forward after conceding? Good entry pass. Needs options. It's going to be another recycle. Again with Root Hullet. Hernandez. Might have had a chance at a cross there. Working the end lines. Another recycle. Yaya. Ah, it's a little bit forced. I would have rather seen them attack that end line because they already scored the goal, but maybe even drawing a corner kick. Yeah, it, it looks as if it, as if it was very difficult, though, because of, as I said, they've got a, a lot of bodies back there defending. With the way that the 3-4-2-1 is set, is set up defensively, 
and offensively is such a hard formation to play against, especially when you attack slow against it or, well, if they attack slower um, with it as well, it's very, very hard to play against. And again, Atleti Riders have mastered it. Davies with options. He's wiggling, he's working. I think we're going to see another recycle. It's pretty decent defending there. Root hole it, probing. Great entry pass, Pele. Great challenge. Slight but, hesitation. Yeah, I thought he was going to look towards the, the step over downwards there to, to get the speed boost and go for a shot at goal we've seen, which is a, a common theme in FIFA 23, but it was a great challenge there from Team Footwiz. Ooh, that almost could have been a mistake there. You've seen that offside trap as well. Again, Atleti Riders, is, they're, they're a little more risk taken on some of the defensive end than they've been playing. Opens up his body, needed to be time green, overpowered it, maybe a little bit surprised there. They finally opened up that space. Yeah. R9 can score from there. The thing is, those moments you rarely, we've rarely seen in this game. That was probably one of the, the more open chances in terms of like player personnel, the way it was set up for Atleti Riders. There's a lot more space than we've seen throughout these two legs, but Final 10 minutes to go. Are there going to be any changes from either side here to try and maybe push and prod for the winning goal? And we should reiterate, if this ends a draw, it continues. We've yeah. got extra time. We've got penalty kicks. We have to have a winner today. This is an elimination matchup. Yeah, there has to be a winner. But which side will it fall on? Again, I don't really know who's more afraid, but I just think it's been a completely even game. If you're in the chat right now, you should let us know. Fire off. Yeah, who do, who do you think's winning this? I'm going to ask it, you, who do you think's winning this? The way this game's gone, you know, I, I don't, I'm not here to knock Footwiz in any way, shape, or form, but I've been around for way too many of these Andoni and Tuga late game masterclass, out control the players, draw that penalty kick, yeah. make a big defensive stop, whip in a back post cross, even penalty kicks, the confidence that they have within that sort of alignment, I think they're squeezed this out. Yeah. How, I don't know. I'm going, Put me on the spot. I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm going opposite. I'm going to say Footwiz. I'm going to root for the Footwiz boys to get a winner or potentially not even a winner potentially it could go into extra time or penalties oh a lot of space there Mbappe needed a skill maybe a step through even a ball roll something to work with we are seeing Footwiz a little more aggressive here but again the way this formation works as you were saying the late releases you always have options you always have space big switch there's that space again. That was rushed. That's the first yeah. time. That's the first time across the two legs I felt as if they rushed an offensive pass. And I think that was another opportunity there. Maybe they could have kept possession. But again, you don't really want to give up a... Those were nerves. Yeah, Surely those were nerves. nerves. They should it, not have sent that deep with the goalkeeper. They had enough yeah, time they to had pick out somebody. Time, I think, to, pull up, to pick out a pass there. Now we're going to see Atleti Riders build up for the last attack. Something that's very common with their game. They're not afraid to keep possession, whether it's from the 80th minute or the 85th for that last attack, because again, mention it in the first leg. You want to try and keep possession because even if you lose it, there's not enough time for your opponent to come back into it. But this is it, Mike. Can there be a chance here to find a winner? Davies and Kunku, they take it off in Kunku. That's a big mistake. A lot of space here. Extra pass made. It's a huge challenge there from Van Dijk. And I think that's the right moment there to just press circle and get it out of there. And that is it, 1-1. One, one. It has been nothing. Ge I genuinely just completely nothing. different than our previous leg, which I will yeah. say was one-sided. I like a little competitive spirit. Yeah, I can feel the sweat here. I can feel the drama, the tension in the room. It's really quiet in this room. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they have a microphone back there, but the only talking that's happening, the only back and forth between the players and their coaches. Yeah, that that genuinely hasn't been anything. Of course, we take a look at the stats here. Possession slightly in favor of Atleti Riders. The, the XG is exactly the same at 1.3. Of course, the goals are the most important stat. 1-1 one, one as we go into extra time. It's not a lot to read into here. Um, maybe the only point that we should make, and I know we've talked about it, is some of the corner kicks and the, yeah. the, the, the differentiating factor of corner kicks. Because I would say coming into this that Footwiz maybe has been the most efficient with scoring corners, but they didn't draw any corners in, in either of these legs. They yeah. really weren't able to take advantage of having multiple options or variations of scoring those corners. Yeah, they also defended the corners really well. It's slightly unfortunate, in my opinion, to concede from it after defending, what was it, four in a row? Done enough to, to negate the, that between chance. The, between the two legs, though, more than 10 corners they've, oh, yeah. they've given up. Yeah, and you're bound to concede one. You're bound. No, there's not much you could really do, but again, you have to take the chances when they come. And it was a bullet header there. I believe it was from Van Dyke, but...
course, we will be able to see the highlights after this game on what's been happening if you've missed it. As we go into extra time, I don't think any team should change anything. I have a feeling Davies is going to make a difference here in this extra time period. He's been a new iteration as well at the competitive scene. Have you been using him yourself? I haven't actually used him myself, but I know Nick Temp is a huge fan of him. Usually he operates in sentiment. This is the first corner. They heard us yeah. talking about it. I said Davies whips in the cross. Here's the corner kick. It's been drawn. And now it's a matter of that game of cat and mouse. You've got R9 going short. Rude Hullet, big target man. A couple different switches to see if you can get a different look. You got Yaya whipping it in. Well defended. And this is what's dangerous afterward, too, is the counter press. Here we go. La Croquetta. Ooh. Oh, it bounces oh, back beautiful. to him. Oh, was that a bounce back? I thought it was straight through. But it, regardless, it's a, an all important goal there from Team Footwiz. I really want to see the, the highlight here of this goal to see whether it was an you actual think it's a second. Nutmeg? I'm not sure if it was a second La Croquetta that got past me, whether it bounced back to him. It was hard to tell. But either way, that is an incredibly important goal for Team Footwiz for who is Nick Sneb and Ethan as they take the 2-1 lead here in extra time. And I call that a wake-up lock, Croquetta, as well. Uh, when you're in a position like that and you're able to push through, it might be back-to-back lock, Croquetta, as you know. You reach, I teach, quick feet, yeah, they always eat. Here we go. One. Ah, oh, it fumbles a little bit, but it, he's got the second one yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. It's, it's unlucky. I'm going to be honest. I think that's really unlucky for Riders. I think he's actually pressed tackle there. But, again, you have to take it when it comes. You take the luck when it falls your way. And, of course... <laughs> but they'll be delighted definitely for that. I think you also have to credit, though, that as a reaction. You get the ball, there's a mistake, kind of a strange tackle animation. Yeah. Falls to one of your main attackers, and you're able to come with not one, but be ready for the second. You do with what you do with yeah, the yeah. chances the when is, they, you, they they fall into your lap. you got to yeah. make the best of them. You rarely ever see a back-to-back -back like a credit nowadays. I remember back in the, the FIFA 19 <laughs> days, you would see 15 <laughs> to 20 in sequence. This is... You see more than a back-to-back. -back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was a... Uh, a rare situation. I'm not sure who it was. I believe it could have been um, if it was Ethan there with the, the skill moves. But again, I've said it many times. You take luck when it falls your way. But again, you have to create your luck sometimes. And they've done it there. Now, Aleti Riders, Mike, can they bounce back? I don't root these guys. or I, I, I don't put them off. Again, guys that have faced so much adversity individually and as a collective. A lot of space to work with. The recycle is on. And Kanku looking for help. Again with the step overs. Great, great defense. Defending. Great, great defense there from Davies not to get baited. A lot of space, a lot of time to work with. You got to go for it. R9. R9 back to Yaya. Maybe a switch of the pitch. They're looking for a little bit of that possession play. Ooh, that was maybe the wrong choice there to potentially. Don't love it lead to a chance there for Atleti Riders. Now they're attacking a lot faster than they have done in the game. Davies looking for options, trying to find an extra pass. There's the recycle to Rude Hullet. Top of the box. Yaya Torre. Lovely entry pass. Needs some skill it's moves. Offside. I think it's offsides. It's coming back. We haven't seen a lot of those double tap passes as well. No, we uh, haven't seen any of that throughout the two legs. That's To just pull that out in the 103rd minute is pretty impressive just out of nowhere. Yeah, it was a a good bit of play there. They look for the recycle with Yaya Torre. And again, I, th I think Footwiz has to go forward. They're great at scoring goals. Don't yeah. try to see it out like that. Go ahead and add one more and, and GG's and move on. Oh, Great step there. I believe it was from Nick Sneb. Maybe one more chance. Got to go forward. They have to now. They can't turn back here. This has to go forward. A lot forward. of space. If Woo! That'll take a second portion. And I think we're going to have another pause here. And where every <laughs> both sides adjust those tactics as we go into the last stage of the extra time. Yeah. Footwiz up a goal. It's going to be time for constant pressure. Has it reached that point yet for I, you? I'd say so for sure. Yeah. 15 minutes isn't too long in a game of FIFA. You have to make sure that you, you leave the game thinking that you've done everything you can do to come back into it. But again, I, you just mentioned how if you were team Footwiz, you would still go forward. And I think that's something that they've done wrong against, or I can say done wrong because in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. But again, in the... Um, the game against RB Leipzig, they sort of tried to shut up shop and invited too much pressure and conceded. So maybe That's they've learned. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I can't, I understand. A little bit like, yeah. Also, you're going up against a pairing that's used to, to, to being in positions that have discomfort. You're maybe used to leading games if you're looking at footwiz here. Yeah. And they're playing for every cutback. They're playing those passing lanes. 
If you push forward, it'll make, give you some more options. You add another goal, and you can wrap the game up. If you lose the ball in the middle of the pitch or between any of your defenders, which you saw starting to happen in that first stage of extra time after they got the lead, yep. you set them up for a perfect counterattack, space on space on space, and their players are now looking electric. They're motivated. Yeah, I think, of course, Ethan is incredibly um, effective at seeing out leads. I feel as if, of course, it's very, very... Oh, I was going to say, it's difficult to transition that into 2v2 where you're both on the same wavelength, but that's what separates the best teams, and that's why I think I think Footways are amongst the best 2v2 teams. I, ge I genuinely believe they are, and I've said that from week one. I remember speaking to you about it. I was saying, watch out for Team Footways, and I think they've learned from their mistakes, and for their sake, hopefully they can see it out, but of course, for Atleti Riders' sake, they need a goal as soon as possible. Well, we had that debate earlier today, the best type of partnership. Is it having the maestro and then maybe more of the structured player? Yeah. Or is it better to have two structured guys? And we, we have this constant conversation with 2v2 because it's still relatively new. As we've got the game queued up, Davies on the ball again. Nothing's really changing here offensively. A lot of these switches of pitches, fantastic defending there. But can you get out of this position? That is the question. They do a great job with that. A lot of space to work with. Big switch of the pitch. Do you challenge him down the wings? Looking for the bring back. There it is, Mbappe. Oh. Interesting skill move choice. And a cancellation, maybe doing a little bit too much? Yeah, I think he's gone, well, I'm not thinking, I'm almost certain he's gone for a different skill move there. I think it would have been the, the, the I don't know what exactly what it's called, but it's the, the different heel to heel. I was thinking maybe even a Magidi cancel, and he held the trigger. Here we go. A lot of space again. Mbappe, can you Great work step. with it? Fantastic timing from Virgil. Zidane, long distance. This is perfect. Hold it with Van der Sar. <sighs> yeah, you probably can't go short. That's the concern here. You almost yeah. have to send it deep. This is good, though, for Atleti Riders because they back themselves here to win possession, which they actually haven't done. I stand corrected. There's that Magidi spin. El Ryan looking for options. Finds options. Nkunku, here's the layoff, goes back to Nkunku. And the clock's now becoming the biggest enemy if you're an Athletic Riders that's fan. An incredible step there as, again. I believe that's from Ethan stepping forward with Yaya Torre. And another great step there from Athletic Riders. I think that was Tuga there as well. Oh. Now they need to go forward. The last couple of minutes here, Mike. Can they get the equalizer? Nino's got space. He's looking for the pullback. Doesn't find it. Vieira, can he get it out? One more attack. Davies. Out wide, Ronaldinho pulls it back. Mbappe, Elastico, cancellation. Oh! Oh, oh my gosh, what a save. Keep Incredible! Up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's done absolutely everything right there with the reverse Elastico. I'm not sure. What happened to the finish? He, he didn't down the pick middle. a corner. Wow. That and that's going to wrap chance. it up. That was it. That was the chance to equalize. Fantastic build up there. But Team Footwiz see it out. Footwiz Ethan giving a little shush to the camera. I can't believe, after all those skill moves, the composure in the wow. 120th minute, he, and then messes up the finish. He doesn't pick a side. I don't know what's happened there. I, I, we, I can't wait to see the highlights. We have to see that again because... Yeah. Run that back. Incredible. Wow. Congrats to Footwiz, though. Getting the job done. We said Van der Sar was looking good. Yeah. Active feet, active hands. I, I'm, I'm still speechless. I really need to see it back first before I give my, my input on it. But it looks as if the shot went down the middle. He didn't pick a corner, as you said, and be, yeah, wow. That was a, an in, interesting way to end the, end the game, an exciting way compared to the, well, however, however minutes we had throughout those two legs. And Atleti Riders are eliminated, the reigning champions in the Club World Cup in Tuga and Andoni. And not only are they eliminated from this competition, but now they have to qualify club, for yep. the Club World, the club world yep. Cup again. That's a big thing that hasn't necessarily been talked about from a, the competitor standpoint, but you know firsthand, yeah. uh, you don't want to have to battle through those online qualifications in order to get yourself a chance. Uh, you want the opportunity not only for, for the extra money, but also to solidify that position yep, and then absolutely. start preparing for the event. Exactly. Wow. 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 So congrats on Footwiz again. We're going to send this off. I think Rachel's down there with Brandon. I'd love to hear what they have to say about that matchup. <laughs> well, it's our first match, isn't it? They went to extra time, which I'm going to say, Brandon, we possibly expected because we had the riders in that who, if you've been following the narrative of these um, EA Sports Cups right back in October, everyone was saying they kind of play boring football. So yeah. we'd expect that kind of scoreline, wouldn't we? Very even, very kind of one-sided from both sides. Absolutely. I think, well, look, 
history shows that the Movistar riders or Aleti riders <laughs> nowadays is a team that wins tournaments. Yes, they're boring, and we've made the whole narrative about them being boring. But on paper, Rachel, they're, they're two v two champions. However, doesn't always work. Maybe you have to change up your game. What's more impressive, I think we'll talk about a bit more, Rachel, is how Footways were pushed into a position to play a style that they don't like to play. You know, they score a lot of goals, they outscore their opponents, they do concede quite a few. There, they defended superbly well, and they just were sort of shoved down this sort of rabbit hole and made to play a different way, and they did it perfectly well. Yeah, they did indeed. And we've been speaking already about Ethan and maybe a resurgence of being top in Europe, and maybe he's kind of, I guess, installed that as well into Nick's neb, and they kind of said, well, a bit like we saw with Fnatic, we're coming up against a team that everyone expects to go through with the underdogs. How do we approach this game? And they approach it like they did here. Just sit back, wait patiently for chances. Yeah, speaking of patience, uh, Rachel, guys. look at look at the corners we have here from Atleti Riders. I think they had like four corners building up to that. Then they finally found a way back into the game. That is what they look for in these games that are so tight. The smallest of margins, like the corners. And then there was this chance for Footwiz, which was the winning goal in the end. Brilliant feat from the Saudi Arabian foot hero, and that is a massive goal, which makes them $25,000 richer, the biggest payday that I believe a footwiz player may have ever had. Can I ask, do you think riders going out is a bigger shock than Leipzig going out? They're, we've got world oh, champion yeah, in a minute. Yeah. We have um, obviously club world champions now in the form of riders. Two world champions, we've just said goodbye to both of them. Uh, I mean, it's a great conversation to have, but I'm sort of on the fence there because you are right. In terms of a 2v2 team, that's a massive shot. But then, of course, you look at those individual accolades of them and Anders. It's a tough one to call, but no, regardless, massive shot. But what's great, two English teams in the top four. Maybe one of them is going to go the full way. They're on opposite sides of the bracket. And in terms of Footwiz, their achievement of getting to the best four in the world 2v2, how would you rate that? Amazing. I mean, you've got to remember, this team is still unbeaten, uh, I believe, as well. They were on an incredible run. Uh, top two they got, they just about squeezed through uh, in the end. And look, they're in the top four. Anything can happen, anything can change now. They'll be playing the winner of Focus or TG NIP. It's going to be a great semi-final regardless. We've had some amazing quarterfinals. Yes, you could argue it was a little bit different to what we've had, but at the end of the day, footwears aren't going to care. They're through. $25,000 richer and they will be in Wednesday's final. Well, it is Focus then and Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. Two great mates as well. They're coming your way next for the final space in the semi-finals. Welcome back to the EA Sports Cup. Our final quarter final is heading your way, so do not go anywhere. Only one more team will make it through to Wednesday's semi finals with the hope to get their hands on this trophy right here. Let's introduce our first team that will go head to head. Our winners of Group D, a team that's hotly anticipated to go all the way and possibly even win it. Please welcome Focus. While the celebrations are out, it is time for these two. Quick word with yourselves. Dull and Mike, let me come straight to you. A huge matchup here. You've had to wait all this time. You're the final quarter final. What have you done? Have you been practicing in the back? Yeah, it's been a long day. Uh, I mean, we practiced a lot uh, to get the hands warm and watched, obviously, we watched all the games and now we're just excited to find a play. Well, now's your time to show us what you've got. Make your way over and you can get ready. Next up, standing in their way, the team that finished second in a bitterly contested Group A. Please welcome the formidable TGNIP. 
These two know what it's like to be on the big stage and they know exactly what they need to do tonight. Let's grab a quick word with yourselves, guys. As I said before to Dylan Mike and to the other team there, your opponents, you've had to wait all day for this, but you know when to turn it on and right now you need to do that. Yeah, I think we've been playing a lot today, been a long day, uh, but hopefully we saved the best for last. Hopefully you've saved the best for last. We're looking forward to hopefully a very exciting game. Tell us, is it going all the way to extra time to penalties after two legs? Uh, I don't mind to be honest, if we just win the game, I'm uh, very happy. Well, we'll see what you can do. Make your way over. You guys can get ready. The countdown clock is on. It is nearly time for us to get started with our last quarter final of the evening. Let's throw it over to Richard Buckley. But first, Brandon Smith. Thank you, Carl. Yes, here we go. Last quarter final to decide who will be in our top four on Wednesday. Back here, of course, in just a few days time for our grand finals. What a game we've got as well. To win. We've had so many good ones. Yes, you can argue the last quarter final might not have been full of goals, but regardless, it was still a massive game that needed extra time. This one, though, Richard, I think we might see goals. We've had three games that have all been fantastic in all their own different ways. I mean, the first game of the day, back and forth affair, all the way to the almost final whistle, PSG with a last chance, the demolition of RB Leipzig. And then that last game, 90th minute, 120th minute drama. Can it get any better than that? And just a quick one as well, Rich. I was speaking to, to both of these two teams, especially Olilito earlier today. He said, look, I'm excited today, but it's just a bit annoying that I've got to play last. There's a yeah. lot of time. He's had to be here for quite some time today. How do you think they would have been feeling just sitting back, seeing all the emotions of both going through and then, of course, being knocked out? Um, I think they'll have dealt with it very well. They're both very mature professional players. Oilito, Levy de Weed, they know what it takes to get to over the line. And I don't see any... I don't see that being an excuse in any way of the, the world if they were to be unsuccessful and get eliminated at this stage. Yeah, well, we mentioned Oli Lee. So he's a foot champions, cup winner in his own right and a player that is part of this ignorable team of TGNIP. Let's find out why we're so excited to watch him today. Oli Lee works pretty much with analysing his opponents. And right now, looking to continue on. St. Maximilian, oh, goal. first goal early. A running scoop here. It's a signature goal for him, really. Olilito has been there, he's won a major. Oh, what a ball by Usman he's in the box, he chips it over the head, and Ronaldo gets the goal! Yeah, I think we will just play our game, stick to our style, and then if we play well, we will have a very, very good chance of winning. Team Hullet is in pyjamas, building towards, creating a bit of danger. Hullet says yes, why not? Olilito, one of the best FIFA players in the world. Of course, we can't not look past Oli Lito without speaking about his teammate and Levy David. He's the second youngest player that has competed tonight, Richard. And at 18 years of age, what this man has also achieved during that online era where he oh. was a European champion, not once, but twice. He was comfortably the best player in Europe. I mean, when you look at what he achieved during that online era. I think there might be a couple of question marks about him during the, the LAN period of the season. Now we're back in these offline environments, but this would be the ultimate stage to silence a lot of the doubters out there. Yeah, well, we said about one German team that's been knocked out the tournament today, RB Leipzig. There's another German team, and that is Team Focus. I think tonight we're going to see a runaway leader. Delight dancing in the balls, quite literally! Focus Clan look alive and breathing in London. I mean, obviously you've seen the goals, so obviously I'm pretty confident going into this. So although Focus have got themselves in a great position today on 10 points, stranger things have happened. How does it feel to be leading this group and to still be undefeated? It's great uh, to get three wins in one row and we're looking to replicate that today. From an observation standpoint, neither of these guys have really been in their best form today. Focus have not guaranteed their way into the top two just yet. Focus to make it three. Pele will. Focus, they're into the knockout stages. So we're glad that we're first and we were never in doubt. Well, what was crazy about that game as well, or, or I should say the second round of fixtures, Rich, they were so convincing in week one when we saw them, but then it took them three games to get their first win just before we obviously 
we broke up for the Christmas break. They drew their first game, lost two bats about the need of the big win against Team Heretics just to get them back up and feeling alive. But I spoke to Dylan Mike, he just said, look, we thought we had it in the bag. This time that can't happen. Yeah, and, and that level of uh, sort of letting your, letting your hair down and allowing your opponents to get back into it, the complacency will not be on show here tonight. That will be one thing that isn't present at all in this matchup. I'm going to speak to everyone at home. If you are watching this game right now, if you think Focus Clan will be successful in this game and progress, put a one, two, three in the chat. Focus, one, two, three. If you think it's going to be Team Hoyt Ninjas in pyjamas, all I'm looking for is a TG NIP. Let's see it fill up and see which way you at home will think this game goes. Yeah, remember the winner of this game will play Footwiz in a semi-final on Wednesday. Let us know in the chat. We know for a fact there's a lot of German fans of this Focus side. You can't look past TGNIP again. A team that were involved in the Team of the Season Cup last year. They've travelled out to Copenhagen to play in multiple tournaments. Both of them did. Whatever that be, World Cup, E-Nations, Club. And Rich is looking at the chat. Who's dominating it? Uh, there's a lot of focus, clan in there. There's a lot of one, two, threes. And they've got the advantage for people watching at home and supporting them, but... No advantage yet on the pitch in the early stages. Oli Lito and Levy De Weed, a truly formidable duo. Well, one thing that they have, Rich, is incredible chemistry. Oli Lito and Levy De Weed. First chance of the game, great save, Van der Sar. And why I say that is defensively, they were so sound in the group stages, only conceding six. Joint best defenders alongside Fnatic. We're also booked a spot in the semi-finals early today of an incredible 8-1 win. Quarter played short, deflected back inside. Here's our nine, couple of step-overs to try and find a way past Teo Hernandez. There's been a few left-backs in action tonight. Ooh. Comes down to personal preference. This is nice from Pele. One thing that Focus loved, Rich, before we broke up for the Christmas break was... Early starts in games, you look back, how many games they were up, what, 3 nil in 45 minutes. I'm going to be interested to see how that game plan may change in this two-legged format. His focus now could be an early goal, couldn't find the cutback into Pele. Well, the game plan completely changes because of the fixture difference with it going now to two legs and the rule set changing. So even a three-goal scoreline with the length of two legs of FIFA, that's not a safe scoreline. That can be turned around very, very quickly. So I expect there to be a slightly slower pace on the outset, but it will pick up and it will accelerate into a lively, lively affair throughout the game. Back there, couldn't find a way through. I think one thing that we can probably agree on is there's going to be a little bit of a feeling out process across these two legs, similar. So as we've seen it in 1v1 FIFA, one thing that both of these two teams have in common is they've both got a Foot Champions Cup winner on their books. Dula Mike was one of the youngest players to win a Foot Champions Cup all that time ago back in Bucharest, Romania. Speaking of major tournaments, these three players matched up at the Team of the Season Cup. Uh, that was when Dula Mike was playing for Neo. It was a victory for Neo on that occasion. So well, maybe he's got the, the upper hand when it comes to 2v2 FIFA. He's already secured a victory. Granted, it was last FIFA, but in this exact building, yeah, believe it or not. Only about nine months ago. Yeah, well, nine months on, Richie's left Neo, now plays for focus. Back inside Mbappe, this is nice. TGNOP, that's a great start. What a goal. Down the byline, the cutback was there. But just the movement. The wherewithal to note your teammate is just going to be peeling off, ready to tap it into the back of the net. TGNIP off the mark. It was all about the build-up play, the real acceleration into the final third, into the penalty box, not allowing a tackle to, to be made. And the, the acceleration that he had, super simple cut back to your teammate, fist bumps all around. You take a one-goal lead. They were my sort of dark horse to win this entire thing. Team Hulk Ninja in pyjamas, when I was speaking to people around the venue, even building up to this when I was asked to give my predictions, I said the way that they prepare and sort of the just the the real professionalism that they have, whether it's in practice, whether it's in scrims, whether it's in warm-up games, 
They know what's required of them, and they've got a lot of pressure on them. Team Hullet, Ninja in Pajamas, two huge esports organizations. And after last year, which would, you could say, disappointing, given the players' reputation and skill level, I think this is a big, big tournament that they'll be eyeing up and thinking, we should be going far in this. Yeah, well, just a bit more on that story, Richard. Only Lito actually flew over to the Netherlands last week and has had ages in the boot camp over there with Levy De Vee. That's the sort of preparation that he's had before flying over just yesterday. A short flight from Amsterdam. Over here to London. They just do things differently. Giant throw. Team at NIP. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Fancy that one from quite some distance. Is Renzo wearing a tracksuit? Is uh, Rory the Lap in the building? Is Tony Pulis in the building? I'm not too sure. But we've seen two already. Giant throwings into the box, looking for Rude Hullick to try and head it down. Unsuccessful thus far. Ter Hernandez finds Pele. Ten minutes away from half-time here. This is our last quarter-final of today's games. Turns, maybe. Oh, no. Great feed! Timed it green! Time to perfection! And Olinito just points to his team and says, that's all you! What a goal. Outstanding yet again from Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. Focus Clan, a side that have got a huge, huge ceiling. Their ceiling is probably one of the biggest in the eSport when it comes to the skill level that Dull and Mike and Musty have got. But and I'm sure they wouldn't mind me saying this, and the week two performances also back this up. They've got a low floor. It can go drastically wrong. We've seen it go wrong for them. They nearly got eliminated from a group where they had a five-point head start going into the reverse set of fixtures. Well, we saw a lot of support for them in the chat. They need support right now to the German duo of Dilla, Mike and Musti. 2-0 down within a half. I was building up the narrative, Richard, that focus go up two or three goals by half-time. Not down. The narrative's gone. The narrative's down. gone. TGNIP, if there was any nerves that were living around, they've certainly gone now. What's a start? Could be again. another chance. Down the byline again, looks for the cut back corner. Something's got to give. Have they been watching Tuga? And Nandoni. Right. Corner played short. By Chazinho. Pele back in an unfamiliar defending position. Half time. A lot to talk about, a lot for Coach Stylo to, to dig his teeth into to try and sort it out. Well, it's just been, it's been one-way traffic. We saw the possession stat fly up on the screen very, very quickly. Um, when there's about four minutes left to play in that first half. 63%. I was mistaken earlier, I said that Renzo should be wearing the Tony Pillage tracksuit. Actually, Stylo should be in the tracksuit because he's done <laughs> Focus clan that's been trying those giant throws into the box. Unsuccessful thus far. I asked the possession. There it is on your screen. 66% with a 1.2 XG. Crazy. Zero shots registered for Focus. Crazy for a team, Rich, that it's called so many goals in the group stages. But we've seen it go wrong before. We, we've seen it go really wrong. About an hour and a half ago. Of course, if you are wondering who is through to Wednesday's final, complexity will take on Fnatic. That's a semi-final in paper. There could be another one in paper. If Hullet would move out the way, Jarzinho, of course, that was offside. But Footwiz are also in the other semi-final, waiting for one of these two teams to join them. If you win, $25,000 guaranteed. And if you win on Wednesday, $50,000. Alongside picking up that trophy you saw, you will be crowned the EA Sports Cup champion and what a way that would be in terms of just giving you a bit of momentum and a push moving on to the, the rest of the tournaments this year including that all-important FIFA E-Club World Cup. Well the automatic qualification is, is so important because it eliminates the, the stress of the Club World Cup qualifying it can be a, a ruthless ruthless qualifying process if you don't finish in the top two in your specific region you then have to play weeks uh, of qualifying to get through and really competitive matches that all boil down to sort of a typically a, a one-off series or a couple of matches if you can get that spot from this tournament june 8 uh, july 18th sorry january 18th i'm getting all my j's mixed up january 18th um it enables you the rest of the year going into june and july 
to have something to look forward to as well. I mean, we wouldn't be waiting a long time there if it was in July. We would be. <laughs> However, TGNIP want to be down on paper to compete in that day. If they can find a third here, they'll certainly be going the right way about it. That would have been even more special if Hullet was to uh, find the back of the net there. 60 minutes gone so far, we have not even oh, seen feet. a sliver of this attacking prowess that we can see from Focus so many times. Dolomite trying to get his team going. Back to R9. The idea was there from Musti, but we need a bit more of that creativity in and around the box if he's really going to test or ask any questions. Off Levy or Alito. Yeah, it was, it was good play down the far-hand side, just looking to pop a chance into a bit of space. Quite fortunate Mbappe gets the rebound, but it will bounce straight back for an offside call. Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. Managing the game will be number one priority right now. Going into that second leg with a clean sheet intact, with a comfortable two or three goal cushion, and really just looking to kill this game off before we even kick the ball in that second leg of action. Oh, nine. If that run tees the Pelé is just offside now. Chance here for Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. Zidane into Pelé, can't quite put it through the legs of Rude Hullet. He does well defensively from the centre of the pitch. Why do you think they just haven't been able to do anything, Rich Focus? Just not been given the opportunity to defensively sound from TGNIP. Defensively sound, and they've also made quite a few mistakes. You saw another one there passing out the back. The ball going straight back into the hands of Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. And they've also bossed the ball. What was it, 66% at half time? They've not had a lot of the ball to do stuff with. As crazy as that sounds. Yeah, right. They've dominated possession. They've dominated the main chances. They've not given a team that loves having the ball and loves scoring goals, the opportunity to do that. Jarzinho playing down the uh, right-hand side here, getting Mbappe back involved, and very simple switch of play. for Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas, switches of play, more than happy, uh, Levy and Oilito. It's also one of the things that separates the players, so-called casual to the, the elite and the best players in the world. N worrying not about going forward and scoring another goal, but just keeping the ball, keep it ticking over, you're in no position to rush. You're happy to go backwards, you're happy to take the easy pass, so to say, when it is on and just managing the game really, really well here. Well, they've got a good knack at mastering these knockout games, have TGNIP, and I think that comes with experience from individuals both being there. Cast your mind back to, to Copenhagen, Richard, last year when there was the Weghorst era that randomly appeared during uh, the tournament. They adapted their team and they, they got over the the, the, the lump of uh, well, Weghorst, who, uh, believe it or not, although he's in the talks of football fans these days, was actually pretty decent towards the end of FIFA 22 last year. We get that pause finally now from TGNMP. They're waiting about 25 minutes for it. Well, we had the winter wildcard Wout, didn't we? Released at centre-back, can also play striker. Don't think we, we're going to see him. We, I've actually seen Turkish him. Turkish links though, wasn't he? Yes, but I've seen him come off the bench a couple of times, believe it or not. Okay. Could be beneficial here. You can see the subs being introduced. Kyle Walker, Alawairan, Patrick Vieira. All brought on. Press there, good. And TGNIP. Focus, then you put themselves in a little bit of a spot well there. Does well to get out of that. Tuller might drive in, cross it into his teammate. Just not on the same wavelength at this moment in time. This is only the first leg, remember, there is a second leg to follow. Winner of this makes it into the semi-finals on Wednesday. Take on 
team footwiz. Keeping the ball, playing for the last chance of the game here. Uh, focus, Klein. You might think, well, the one nil, the 2 0 down, they're trailing by two goals. But if you can get just one goal, half the deficit, see yourself into the second leg with a very minimal defeat, you feel great. Tell you what, what a first leg, what a first half of the game, you can say. From TGNIP, Levy the Veard and Olito well, have to be over the moon with that performance. They know it's not job done yet, but just in control of everything. I don't think I can sit back, Rich, and think about any real chances that Focus had. Um, no, I don't think they did. They had a couple of nice spells of play inside the box where they were looking to get to the byline or maybe cut it back or look for an extra pass. But I don't really recall a, a shot on target or a big save needed for um, the goalkeeper of Oli Lito and Levy Dawid. Well, look, something has got to change, so we'll give them a, a couple of minutes to do that. We're off for a quick break. When we get back, it will be our last leg of action in tonight's action here at the EA Sports Cup. We'll see you in a few minutes' time. The EA Sports Cup is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Welcome back to London for the final time today. We've got one leg of FIFA ahead of us. And the storyline as it stands right now is Focus might be getting knocked out of this EA Sports Cup. Of course, myself, Brown, is with Richard Buckley guiding you through the last leg of play here. But Rich, something has got to change if you are a Team Focus fan. If you're a TGNIP fan, more of the same, please. Yeah, you could say they, uh, they really need to focus up. You can even do the one, two, three in there if you want. Yeah, why not? Um, it was just a, a really, really solid first half performance from Team Hulk Ninja in pajamas. They created a, a chances. You can see the stats there from full time. 62% of the ball. Zero. They, they dominated the game. You see the passes. That, and I imagine a lot of those passes were out the back. They didn't really create much. It was just a really lackluster performance. Uh, Zero and shots. I don't feel like we're being too harsh on them by saying that they just didn't really turn up in that first leg, did Focus Klein. And they have to do something different. They have to react if they want to try and turn this game around. They have to create a chance. This is a team that likes scoring goals. If there's two players that you can rely upon to give you a very, very similar performance, to almost replicate a performance, it's Oli Lito and Levy Dewey, two of the calmest players in the scene. It's a big, big ask. Has to be different for Focus Clan. Has to be. It's yeah, simply not good enough by their own standards. I can assure you that one of the owners of the team, Elias, will be watching from Germany now, be thinking, come on, lads, we were so much better in the group stages. A team that nearly netted 20 goals without a single shot. Credit, though. Unbelievable credit to TGNOP for stopping focus in every single possible way from causing any danger. We've seen three minutes already and we've already seen a change in aggression. He was pressing high up the pitch there with Focus Clan. Uh, Musty forced a throw in deep inside Team Hullet Ninja in Pajamas territory and we've already starting to see the, the game. I think we, this is how it's going to take shape. It's going to be Team Hullet Ninja in Pajamas looking to kill the game off, whether that's a third goal, whether that's playing the clock, whether that's playing the ball. And Focus Clan slowly but surely squeezing up the pitch, pulling more numbers higher, making it tighter and tighter. And we're going to see this sort of game. Here comes R9. It could be a third for TGNOP if they can work this one into the box well. Oh. 
every single second win they're there. Zidane, good idea, stopped in his tracks that time, no way through. Speaking of that man on the ball, Richard, Trent Alexander-Arnold, why is he the man of choice maybe over Cafu? I think Trent defensively might not be as good as Cafu, but on the ball he just gives you so much more. And uh, I think we've seen he's got the giant throw. Um, a little bit taller. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's as that as such. He's got the giant throwing uh, trait. We've already seen in that first league they tried two long throwings into the box. And he's just a little bit better on the ball. Here comes Ronaldinho, Mbappe, massive chance, he timed it great, he Trent Alexander-Arnold trying to get involved. Unfortunately, he is offside. But that is the first shot they've had. I don't think I could name you a fullback, whether it's in real life or in the game of FIFA, that you'd want more than Trent Alexander-Arnold in the final third, whether that's passing, whether that's crossing, whether that's dribbling or shooting. He is the man for that job. And yes, there might be a couple of holes in his game defensively and he might be out of position but more than Cafu would be going forward he's the player now a scoop turn this is good feet TGLRP silence any chance of a comeback it's a great first chance there Mbappe with the time green finish it's the positive the, the best chance I'd say that we've seen so far from focus good feet Levy, Oli Lito back to Levy! And it was nearly Hullet. And around the box, what are we seeing from this corner? Levy's over it, Jalzinho is short. What can we expect to see here? Hullet towards the front post or not, goes back instead and into the goal! Clever FIFA from two players at the top of their game. Three goals to nil, they lead. What a corner! whipped into that back post with a lot of pace, a lot of precision on it. We've seen Van Dijk, that World Cup stories player item, score already today. He is dominant at the back post and corners are so, so dangerous. We're starting to go into a corner meta in FIFA 23 right now where you would rather your opponent have a shot on goal or take a foul out wide rather than tackle him for a corner with how many corners are scored and the consistency that you can create chances with them. 3-0. What has happened to the two German teams that were in this tournament today that have just come sort of cold turkey into the knockout stages, have not found their feet at all. RB Leipzig found themselves 7-0 down before they even could pull a goal back. Yes, a different storyline here, but still, one shot they've registered. They're 3-0 down. It's got to change now. We're going to be looking at 4-5. Mbappe, Levy, Pele, dancing so well with Olilito. Olilito having the time of his life in the box. That doesn't show how confident these two are feeling. I don't know what will. They're dominating the game. They are creating more chances. They're more consistent. Possession has been their best friend so far. And, and really, they've silenced a lot of the threat that Focus have, have created. Ronaldinho, focus in need of a miracle, in need of a goal, just to spark some sort of imagination to say, look, we can get this back. Just controlling the tempo of even how this game is being played. Pelé into Mbappe, oh no. He's in the box waiting, this is Levy now. Great feet. Clever idea there is Jarzinho peeled in off the right, was waiting for the extra pass in the box. Oh, that's cheeky, Ronaldinho. Seven minutes away from half time. If you're a focused fan, still not much to talk about or see yet. Corner is this. Away back into the game. I haven't really seen them get a corner, let alone make anything happen now. I just see Dylan Mike looking over to his teammate there. Trying to work out what he's looking for. Keep an eye on Virgil van Dijk and Pelle. In it goes. Virgil van Dijk was there and Bappe meets it well in the air. 
Still recycled and not fully dealt with. Charge, goal, game on! You just saw that strike into the bottom left corner. I'd love to tell you who scored it, but there seemed to be a bit of controller swapping about going on. Not too sure if that was for the corner to make sure that they had their preferred player over it. I can tell you, Focus Clan scored. <laughs> the lovely uh, couple of step overs and that green timed shot into the bottom corner across the keeper. Well, it's a goal back just before half time. And the second real chance of the game. Well taken finish as well by Dula Mike. Could be a chance to mean nothing. Cheeky chip. Oh, play Van der Sar. What a chance for R9 there. Well then, half time. They do get a goal back. There is still a long way to go though. Half time with just 45 minutes left. It's TGNIP that lead the game three goals to one. However, for now, Carl Walker is joined by a special guest who will be very happy that his team is in the semi-finals. Thank you, Brandon. I'm indeed I'm sat, stood with the man who will be in the pit on Wednesday when uh, his team, Team Footwears, your team manager of Denman, faces one of these. Out of the two, who would you rather avoid? Let's go with that one. Mm, it's a hard one, to be honest with you, because they're two different teams and focus are very attacking. But at the same time, Nip, I'd say they're a little bit more similar to Riders. Like they take the time with the build-up. They're a bit more well-drilled. I think it'll be two different games. But at the moment, it looks like we're going to be playing Nip but there's 45 minutes to go, but I think I'm just happy to be in the semi-finals, to be honest with you. I can see that smile on your face. Let's get into it. Big 45 minutes to go. Brandon, back to you. Thank you very much, Carl. And yeah, no surprise, Dem will be buzzing to see his two players he's not, he's not sleepy tonight. in the semi-final. But hey, they've still got a semi-final to play for, haven't they? They do, yeah, they do. And they, need, and they need him behind them. He's been a huge part of that success this year. I mean, going up there with West Tanser is one of the best coaching performances of the day. Two big wins for two English esports organisations that are in the top four. Well then, has that goal just before half time given focus something? Spark something within. Dylan almost need to say, come on. We're known for scoring goals, we're known for playing really good attacking FIFA. TGNIP just going to control this game at their own pace. They know what's on the line. Another top four finish. Something that they know only too well. Mbappe, watch that run. Olilito is trying to make for Levy to find as Jarzinho tries to slow it down. Jarzinho does well. Mbappe tries to squeeze it through. And no way much further for him to get through. I was going to ask you, it's probably an obvious answer, which, which team has impressed you most today, but I'm going to probably get a guess you say Fnatic. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think what Fnatic showed. I think every team so far has gone through has impressed in a different way as uh, Focus come forward here. Could be a big chance. Still it's alive. alive! Oh, wow! Suddenly there's an eruption on the Focus site in that booth. Two goals. We said what has that first goal done, it certainly got them going. There's the second one, and suddenly they're only one goal away, Rich, from squaring this all up. It's taken them a long time to get going, but they won't care if they can make it 3-3. Three, three. R9 had the first chance, it fell to Pele, who's licking his lips as he finds the back of the net. You're asking me who's impressed the most today. I'll hold out on an answer because it could be the winner of this matchup. Well, it might not mean that much if TGNOP can find a response. Straight away, Pele finds Hullet. Trying their best to defend. Oh, wow! Levy to feed! With a goal that might be worth $25,000 and a top four finish. When the space is there, have a dig. Why not?
Green time, curled into that top corner. A touch of class from Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. He didn't need a time, Green. He didn't need anything with that. Just needed Zidane Dazan to open up his body and just to finesse that one into the top corner, Richard. Yeah, you'll get to see it here. Hullet just moved it onto Zidane. Just curled it past the keeper, out the stretch of the defender. And you see what it means there to Levy and Oli. Perfect time to score as well, just to stop any chance or hope of a comeback. Yes, there is still 26 minutes to play. But they needed that. Kunku on for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Alfonso Davies also comes on to play. That covers up the fullback, or two fullbacks, I should say, as Carl Walker also comes on. Three changes. The focus. The goal before the 80th minute. The focus, and we could be looking at a ridiculous last 10 minutes and last ending to our fourth quarter final of the night. It's a bit of a Hail Mary pass. It worked out well. Back to Pele. Dula Mike looking for another goal. Dula Mike still! He scored all three goals! He talks about Hail Mary. He just launched it forward. Play on the second bounce. As soon as Dylan Mike picked up that ball in around the box, he just drove at the defence. Kept on going, kept on going. And Pele... Scored the second, scored the third. Focus Clan lead this matchup. But in the overall series, Team Hullet Ninja in Pajamas, first leg dominance, still reigning supreme. They're just starting to find their feet, aren't they? The attacking sense of things. They're finding their rhythm. And when they do, no one can really stop them. That that Zidane goal might have been the one to send TGNIP into a semi final. Focus might have other ideas though. 15 minutes left to play here. There's a lot of time left. And the press is going to be so, so impactful right now. You saw a glimpse of the formation. Very, very defensive for Team Hulk Ninja in pajamas. I'm not surprised at all with the. Uh, the team that's lined up here and the, the the shutout potential that is on the line. If you can keep a clean sheet for the next 10 minutes, you are $25,000 better off. And then the semi-finals coming back on Wednesday. However, those two men on your screen right there will be pressing the life out of you like an anaconda trying to suffocate its prey, just hoping and praying for a mistake out the back. been so good at TJNP just switching the ball from side to side reducing the pressure when they need to this is the time they're going to need to fall back on that one the man that everyone fears Ooh. still is alive Not for that long Mbappe dispossessed 10 minutes to play focus have come from behind on three times at the moment. Can they find the all-important fourth goal? Mbappe, lovely ball towards the back post. Lovely chest down, this could be Musty. Looking for his teammate inside. Massive block there with a the left leg from Van der Sar. A chance to break. Oh, look at the pace. Mbappe's in a running race, maybe on his own. Is there a cutback available? Lovely scoop turn. Cuts back inside, Levy again, Ronaldinho tries his best to reverse Elastico, his way through, might get it back again, great feet, even better save! Chance squandered to kill the game off. Focus Clan will come up the other end, huffing and puffing and hoping to blow the house down. Oh, what a chance. Last three minutes. Focus. In possession with their last roll of the dice of a chance of a semi final spot. Great tackle. Levy again. Oh! Where's that ball going to bounce? Ooh. 
unfortunately, it finds its way into Van der Sar's hand. It's a case of just letting that time trickle down. Where's that ball going? Oh, no. Just about dealt That's with it. clear. Ball. That should be enough. TG and IP are back in business. Top four guaranteed. Oli Lito and Levy David are $25,000 richer. And there's another German upset, you can argue. Focus out. They will not be going any further in this tournament. What an outstanding performance from Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas. Levy the Weed showing some of his best gameplay that we've seen from him in a LAN environment. A lot of the goals were Levy the Weed, a lot of the goals created by Levy. Just that pure brilliance in the final third and the advantage they gave themselves from the first leg too much in the end. Well, how many times, Rich, do we talk about 2v2 50 being a team game? Yes, it is, but you need individual brilliance at times. That's a down goal. Really was the difference in, in many moments, but so many times both players just stepping up and making things happen. Well, there you have it. There was eight teams, now there's four. We're going to throw it down to Carl Walker, who's joined by two of those semi-finalists. Thank you, Brandon. I am indeed Ethan from Team Footwiz. Joins myself, Mike LaBelle and Oli Lito. We'll come to you in a moment. We'll let you calm down. I keep on saying this. Ethan, I've got to talk to you. You've had some time to process that win. You're back with us on Wednesday. One step closer to getting your hands on that trophy. What have you made of your performance today? Um, it was like a different game. Like me and Nick said, we really do practice our attacking. Like we want to like go at our opponents, but movie style, you've got to, you can't play to their tempo and adjust to them. But overall, I'm really happy with how we defended and uh, hopefully we can turn into our next game. Sometimes it feels like competitors that get on the stage, that come and compete, they're very vocal. They like to talk about themselves. They'll play the underdog or then they'll come and celebrate. And there's lots of trash talking as well. However, yourself and Nick Sneb, you just get on with the job and you've always got a smile on your face. Yeah, so when we made it 1-0, we did not too much celebration. They make it 1-1 with a corner goal. They're giving it some serious like, beans. I'm saying, like, what is the point? Make it 2-1. I don't do anything. But yeah, we just keep it humble. Will you be uh, keeping it humble and keeping it calm when you come up against these guys on Wednesday? I can't see a reason why not to. Oh, okay, Mike. Well, maybe it's the opposite of keeping it calm here. We just <laughs> saw both of you pop off. What does this kind of mean for you? Because we don't always see that energy between yourself, Levy, Renzo. Everybody was cheering for this result. Maybe it was because it's going up against Focus. Walk it through. Walk us through the final moments here. Um, I think we, uh, by the end of the game, we uh, conceded a pretty stupid goal, I guess. We were uh, a bit too passive and just giving him way too much space and score. So the last 20 minutes was uh, nerve-wracking, but somehow always is something with me and Levy. We always give the opponents a chance. So I don't want this to happen in the upcoming games, uh, but I think we played good overall, especially the first leg. I think we dominated uh, then. Uh, but of course, we're playing against a very, very good side as well, you know, one of the best teams in the world in focus. So uh, GG's to them. And if you can share it, we heard you boot camped. What does that actually consist of? I know you flew over to Netherlands, but that's all I heard. I didn't get any of the insider track. No, I've been away from Sweden now for, I think, two weeks. Uh, so we've been practicing a lot uh, together. And I mean, um, the thing with Leif is that he's as hardworking as I am. So we are playing a lot. We are going through a lot of tactics, set pieces, everything, you know, because I think that can make the difference into, into it too, right? So uh, we've been putting down a lot of time. And I think, uh, yeah, it's shown now. And you're next to Ethan, you know what Foot Wiz is all about. What does that look like for you in terms of preparation, that matchup in particular? I don't think too much. Uh, we have a lot of uh, respect for Foot Wiz, of course. Uh, Ethan now became a European champion as well in uh, 1v1. So a very, very good side that we're coming up against. But I think uh, we will just focus on ourselves, right? And uh, just uh, playing our game and uh, hopefully that will be enough. Brilliant. Well, congratulations, TGNIP and Team Footwiz. That completes the set. Our semi-finals are good to go right here on Wednesday. Rachel, what a day it's been. FIFA Esports is back in 2023. It is indeed, Carl. We've had so many upsets, haven't we? Highlights then from that final quarter final between Focus and Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas. We heard then from Olalito being on that boot camp. I mean, what I take from these guys as well is they're such champions of each other, Olalito and Levy there. They really kind of back each other. And then Renzo as their coach. We saw what they did, I guess, in the summer before Copenhagen in the finals there. They just really bring out the performances when it matters. and. I, I'm going to say as well to focus here, coming back like they did, I think we all possibly thought Ninjas in Pajamas were better, even, even better than we saw them out here today. And maybe it would have been more one-sided 
it didn't end up like that, which I think shows how focused focus were coming into this event. And we said they kind of had a little bit of a wobble, didn't they? So the comeback, how they did, up against arguably one of the best 2v2 partnerships that we've seen this tournament. Well, focus got disruptive, and maybe the Achilles heel here is we saw them start amazing coming into the tournament. In between, struggled a little bit today. They showed some of the form, but they didn't have the same consistency that we had seen on display. You see the brackets kind of finalized. But I think you gotta give a lot of credit to Alito, uh, Renzo on the coaching, and, and Levy. These guys just feel like they should always be in the finals. You can almost sense that aura or energy off of them, and they're disappointed if they go out early at any point in any tournament. Well, don't write their name on the final just yet. They won't want you to. That's the kind of partnership they have as well. They don't want to big themselves up too much. You can hear from them. They're so humble all the time when they win and when they lose, of course. But that is going to be a great semi-final. Mike, before we go there, we want to look at the goals. We know you guys at home love the goals. We love them as well. We had quite a few, especially in that Fnatic game. But Mike, goals of the week. Talk Ooh, to us. We've had some spicy ones today. And speaking of that Fnatic game, I think we've got to start out with that. R9 steps into space. Another day in the office space. You see the celebration. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you see? Absolutely nothing. Goals on goals on goals. The Anders celebration. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. Yeah, I, there's definitely a message that was sent. R9, a little bit of a cancellation. Top corner, best corner. We just saw that happen with Ninjas in Pajamas and Team Hullet. Dino working the end line. Look at this beautiful ball roll. Get out of my house. The extra layoff. R9 can't miss from there. A little bit of that razzle dazzle. Something that we can appreciate. And Bappe with the step over. Some is good, more is better. Take the space, my friend. Walks it around the goalkeeper. That's number two. And easily for me, the same game. We saw it early on. I told you I think it would be the game or the goal of the day, or I thought it would be the goal of the day. Here it is. You see R9 just working, coasting, boasting. He's so proud, large and in charge. He's giving you a little bit of everything. Mr. Fantastic, the one man show. He's clinic. He's Take biased. Him to the doctor. He's biased. He's North American. Of course he I'm is. I'm just saying, tell me there was a better goal in the day. I'm still saying, obviously, it was going to come from complexity. Anyway, let's put our differences <laughs> aside. Mike, what a day. We spoke at the beginning about the eight weeks we had prior to Christmas and what was possibly an upset. Upset today. You already had NIP written in. The other three names, did you expect them to all get the spots? I had complexity going through, which we saw early at the top of the show. I think the, the results in between. Footwiz with a big upset, taking down the, the reigning champs. So congratulations to Footwiz. And then I don't think anybody could have expected Fnatic to win by that margin. It, maybe it's not that they won, but that ended 8-1. 8 one eight you, one. you sent people home. I saw tears. I saw emotion. It was one-sided. They were celebrating. They were almost mocking them. He said they're doing their celebrations. They're sending a message. A statement of intent. An absolute statement of intent. So I definitely think that builds up a new rivalry in the scene. They're going to see each other again. Absolute drama we had tonight. And it's only Monday. We get to do it all again <laughs> on Wednesday. We get a day off tomorrow, and you guys do as well, because we have our semifinals and finals on Wednesday night. Same place, of course, here in London. We'll be live at 6 p.m to see which duo go home victorious at the EA Sports Cup. They take 50,000 US dollars as well. And a spot, remember, in the FIFA E-Club World Cup in the summer. Massive stakes up for grab. We can't wait for you guys to join us back here. We get to see who's a champion. But for now, we'll see you on Wednesday. Good night.